Okay, hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with my great Ace Attorney Chronicles. Let's start the investigation. I kind of wanted to take a break today um, because my throat was hurting a lot. But then I was like, no, I need to hurry up and finish this game. The mysteries are too um, tantalizing. Yeah, I, would just, I just want to figure everything out. I can't, I still can't quite believe what just happened. I know, I inquired with the bailiff after the court session was adjourned. And it seems Mr. Visual was taken to the hospital to recover. Right. Ten years ago now, Mr. Vigil attempted to commit suicide by jumping out of the window of the prison, prison governor's office. But ever since then, he's completely blocked the memory of those events from his mind. Uh, raise volume a little. Nobody knew his secret, not his family, not even the man himself. But I, I forced it out into the open. Was it wrong of me to do that? Did I overstep the mark, I wonder? Hello, Iris. You're miles away. Anyway, I've brewed a fresh pot of soothing tea for you. Oh, thank you. You and Susie have had an exhausting day so far, haven't you? Oh. Thank you, Iris. How thoughtful of you. Do you happen to know- Wait, do you happen to know where Mr. Scholes is? When we came out of the courtroom back into the defendant's antechamber, he disappeared. No, I don't know. He just suddenly sprang back to his feet and left. All he said was, I must leave. I wonder if he's pursuing the mystery of Inspector Gregson's death. Well, you know what Hurley's always saying, don't you? There are mysteries in this world that should perhaps never be solved. But a construction of a solution comes only at the expense of the destruction of something else. What does that mean? He knows very well that when you open someone else's old wounds, you often open your own, too. He just can't take his own advice and leave well alone. Solving mysteries is too important to him. That's so true. That's what I like about Hurley, after all. I suppose that's the lot of a great detective in some ways. So then, let's have tea, and then I'll give you a hand. Oh, do you have time, Iris? Yes, I finished this month's manuscript at last, with barely a day to spare before the deadline. Oh, I'm so looking forward to it! A brand new story to read in the adventure of Herlock Sholmes. You know, I always hide Hurley's violin in the days before I have a deadline. You, you do? Poor Mr. Sholmes. I'm sure that's very wise, Iris. How sensible of you. Now then, my dear fellows, let's make a plan of action before we continue our investigation. Converse, this morning's trial. So, how did it go into court this morning? Well, we still don't know the truth about what really happened, but one thing is increasingly clear. Lord Van Zeeks definitely didn't do it. A goodie! Yes, that's right. We managed to uncover several new facts as well. Oh, really? Not more Ace Attorney. I gotta finish it, Regal. Also, happy Tuesday. Hope you've been having a good day. And there was another development too, Kazuma. Yes, it's quite clear now. That Kazuma-sama is not himself. The way he's acting, it's almost as if he's possessed. I know, I mean, at the end of the proceedings earlier. He was like a bloodhound the way he was chasing down Mr. Vigil's forgotten past. He's not normally so mercilessly persistent. What's going on in his head, I wonder? I really need to sit down with Kazuma and try to understand what he's get going through. The Reaper's Innocence. If Gregson was- ah! If Gregson was really murdered the day before his body was discovered, then Lord Van Zeeks has to be innocent, you see. What? The day before? Well, that should be easy to enough to work out just by examining the corpse, surely. Yes, you would expect so, but curiously, no time of death was included in the autopsy report. Hmm, that is curious. There are still unanswered questions about Lord Van Zeeks, though, aren't there? Ah, do you mean... 
I mean, what was he doing there on Fresno Street that day in the first place? Well, according to the man's testimony, he said he was investigating Inspector Gregson, didn't he? And it turns out that little room was actually the inspector's secret office. Ooh, that sounds like it all has the makings of a wonderfully devilish plot. But then why was that notice board in there covered in all those particular papers? Papers about cases with a link to the Reaper. I'm starting to get a bad feeling about the- Oh, okay. So the papers aren't to deal with the Professor case. It's all with the Reaper cases. Okay, okay. Now I know why Gregson's inspecting it all. A new FF14 event starts next week? Oh, nice. I was thinking, like... It's been a while since I played 14. I was wondering if any expansions came out. But I haven't seen anything on Twitter. But, oh, it would be nice to jump back into 14. Oh dear, that sounds more like something horribly devilish. We must start by looking into Inspector Gregson's movements of late. Gregson's movements. Did you miss Endwalker? I just miss all of Final Fantasy XIV. I never imagined I might have to be investigating an inspector's movements. Well, according to the entry in his diary, he's carrying out an incognito investigation of the Red-Headed League the day before his death. Oh, you mean he was doing the same as Hermie? Well, Mr. Scholz was trying to apply, whereas the inspector was supposed to be investigating. I do wish it had been the other way around. Anyway, as it turns out, the inspector who went to investigate the Red-Headed League that day wasn't actually Gregson at all. It was Mr. Vigil, in possession of Gregson's identification. Hmm, you know what that sounds like to me? Establishing an alibi. Oh my! Yes, you're absolutely right, Iris! But, why would Grexon need an alibi? Island Sanctuary comes out soon? What's Island Sanctuary? It would appear that the Inspector had something to do that he wished to keep secret. I don't believe it. I always thought he was just a harmless lover of fish and chips. But perhaps they were seasoned with something a little more potent than salt and vinegar. I think perhaps we should try to move away from food analogies. Well, anyway, if Lord Van Zeeks felt the need to investigate Gregson... Yes, I agree. We must try to find out what he knows. But we'll probably have to go to the prison to talk to him. Vigils, you say? Isn't that the name of the lady who came to visit Hurley yesterday? That's right. To ask Mr. Sholmes if he would help her to find her missing husband. Only Mr. Sholmes completely passed the buck to us. Actually, didn't you say that Mr. Vigil had been taken to hospital? Do you know which one? Ah, it's St. Sinners. Starting to wonder if all the hospitals in London have closed down. But that's amazing, Runo. You found the lady's husband already. Well, I suppose I have, by accident. And ten years ago, while Mr. Vigil was chief warder at the prison, he was responsible for overseeing the professor's incarceration. No. So when the convict escaped, he was held responsible and immediately dismissed. Sometimes I really don't want to grow up. There's more. For ten years after that, while he was ostensibly working as a peddler, he also had a secret job. He was paid by Gregson to be a stand-in, to impersonate the inspector. To impersonate Gregson? Well, but why? I have absolutely no idea. Ugh, Ginny was right. I'm starting to think all adults are up to no good now. Including you, Bruno. I haven't paid anyone to impersonate me. That means he has ties to the Professor and to the ins Inspector Gregson, though. Oh, Island Sanctuary. It's like Harvest Moon with War Final Fantasy XIV. You get a farm, get to go crops, get to release your minions into the base. Resource can be mined and harvested. Looks like it's all specific to the island, though. Hmm. Own oh, inventory and everything? I never played Harvest Moon. I don't really know what the gameplay is like, but maybe I'll check it out? So I do think we ought to pay a visit to Mr. Vigil, don't you? Back to Saint Sinners, then. Every player gets one, too? Nice! Well, I think it's clear what we need to do, isn't it? Let us investigate, my dear fellows! Oh, Iris! You're even more enthusiastic than usual today! If anyone has anything to hide, my special Wilson shooting iron will set them straight! That... water pistol? 
stuffed full of a piping hot extra special blender fine. I'm quite sure it'll be very effective. I'd better be careful not to hide anything. Well, it feels a little strange that Mr. Sholmes is nowhere to be seen, but still. Let's go and see what we can find out. Yes! Is Island Sanctuary gonna be like a thing within Final Fantasy XIV? Or is it like its own separate game? Let's go visit Mr. Virgil first. Such a clean room. Okay, I guess he's not here yet. Then should we examine things? I think there's anything we can examine. There are all sorts of medicine. Okay, that's from last time. Yeah, 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 yeah. All that dialogue was from Olive Green's thing. This notice caught my eye before, actually. I suppose it's some sort of slogan for the ward. A cheerful welcome message, perhaps. Let's see. Pay with good cheer, leave with good cheer. Well, look at that! You were spot on, Mrs. Sato. It's full of cheer. I wonder how many discharged patients pay their medical bills with good cheer, though. Once I had to pay, have a very painful injection when I fell ill with cold. I feel awful already, so why did I have to suffer the sting of the injection as well as the bill? I yelled at the doctor. Oh dear, what a terrible treatment. Oh, what is this red sign? Bottles in that cabinet, safe to keep them there. That is another cabinet thing. Okay, I guess the red um, sign doesn't matter. Ah, oh, look, a pair of crutches. Before we came to Britain, I hadn't realized they were used here as well. I imagine they were imported into Japan from Great Britain in the first place. Oh, so no one in all of Japan broke a leg before their arrival? Anyway, the sight of these things doesn't bring back good memories for me. Dear, did you injure yourself once I need to use some? When I was little, I thought they looked fun, so I borrowed a pair to play with. But then I slipped and sprained my ankle. I see. They contain powerful magic, those wooden staffs. The power to heal and the power to harm. I think a certain cheeky little boy managed to cause the harm all by himself. I never broke my ankle, so I never had to use crutches. Thank the lord. Ah, uh, patient treatment notes. What did he say, I wonder? Endlessly obliging. I suppose that's referring to the patient in this bed. I would think so, and until Mr. Vigil is a little more stable. It's probably just as well that he has a kindly person in a neighboring bed. The endlessly part is a little worrying though, isn't it? I mean, what if Mr. Vigil suddenly declared that he'd like to take a trip out of the window? Would this endlessly obliging patient simply open it up for him and say, be my guest? Let's check with the doctor later. Can we read these notes then? These must be the patient's treatment notes, let's see. Tendency to jump from windows, remember to place cushion at base of wall outside. Aren't we a story out from the ground here? Oh dear, poor Mr. Vigil. I can't help feeling that there's a better solution to the problem than a cushion though. Finding something you'd lost isn't always a happy experience it turns out. Pursuing the truth can be a very dark business sometimes, can't it? Yes, I'm afraid it can. Okay, so he's clearly not here, so we gotta move. Um, let's go to the prison to talk with Van Zeeks. Lord Van Zeeks is reading, look! He doesn't seem to like- he doesn't seem like he wants visitors, does he? But he must have noticed that we're here, surely. What the Uniponis want. That's no way to greet the lawyer who's trying his hardest to prove your innocence, is it? Perhaps not. Hmm? I apologize. So, what can I do for you, Mr. Nadohodo? Stop being so racist, for one. Lord Van Zeeks, speaking earnestly. Oh, the fog will lift over London for the first time in months tomorrow. This does feel very, very strange. I must say, I was impressed. Oh, well, thank you. Not by you, by your fellow Nipponese, your prosecutor friend. Oh, I see, yes. It's sardonic, don't you think? For a man such as me, so loathing of the Nipponese, to be entirely at the mercy of the two of you. 
I suppose. It's retribution for having played the part of the Reaper all these years. Played the part? Oh, that's- I should go back to the, um... The room and I see if I can examine the board a little more or something. Maybe there's more clues hidden inside. You once told me that you gladly allowed people to believe you were the Reaper. Because it helped reduce the amount of serious crime that took place in London. If keeping quiet and playing the part benefits the cause, a cause I myself am committed to pursuing. Then why would I choose to say anything? But the henchman of a criminal killed by the Reaper attacked you only the other day. And that was just the most recent of many attempts on your life, wasn't it? Someone is clearly profiting from your silence about all this. Someone is using you. Believe me, ever since the Reaper first appeared, I've been doing my utmost to expose him. Or rather, expose the organization. Ah! It's a whole organization? It's inconceivable that all those accidents were orchestrated by one man. No, the Reaper always appears to have a very accurate information about the accused in each case. Which can only mean... that somebody at Scotland Yard is involved. Someone at... You can't mean... It's taken me many years, but I finally identified the central figure in this Reaper organization. Gregson? I mean, it makes... sense. That's why he had all the articles, because he's like, haha, I gotta look up on my victims and all- Oh... No... Gregson? The Reaper? Gregson's secret... So, the reason you were investigating Inspector Gregson is because... You intended to expose him as a Reaper? As I said, the Reaper of the Bailey is no single person. It's a highly secret organization with close ties to Scotland Yard. But there's no doubt that Gregson was a key member of that organization. I don't believe it. Are you saying that Gregson? That he was behind all those awful criminals meeting there? Gregson didn't do the dirty work himself. Oh. He was the tactician. His job was to covertly in investigate the marks and plot their assassin assassination. In order to do that without arousing suspicion, he regularly needed a firm alibi. Which is where Mr. Vigil came in, posing as the inspector. Vigil knows nothing of the Reaper, but the room he rents on Fresno Street was almost certainly the headquarters of the operation. Gregson would have met the assassin there for briefings. So we don't actually know who carried out the killings then. Actually, I do have a name. You what?! Well, if you can name the man, you have the true identity of the Reaper already, then. Or... If I can name the woman. Courtney Scythe? Oh. She's a young woman by the name of... Asa Shin. Asa Shin? Assassin! Asa Shin! Ha! 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 I just finished Virtue's last reward onto the original. Oh, cool. I love Virtue's Last Reward. Wait, is that- that's the second one, right? The second one of the non re games is the best. Yeah, because Zero Time Dilemma is the last one. I don't- uh, that one could have been better. Wait, what? Shin? Wait, did we know her true- do we know her real name? What? I thought this was Giselle Brett. I need to play the last one just to finish the story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, play it, play it, play it. Miss Asashin, the true name of a terrifying killer I know only too well. When did we find out her name? She came to Japan posing as a visiting student and murdered Dr. John H. Wilson. Then, just when it seemed that diplomatic protection would help her escape Japan and conviction, The mysterious woman was herself murdered in a small summer beach hut. And that woman was actually the Reaper of the Bailey? Mr. Naruhodo, this perhaps isn't the place to discuss- No, no, of course not. We can't mention it here. The fact that she killed Dr. John H. Wilson. 
Because Iris doesn't know that, and it's very likely that the man was her father. Asashin. I should let father know at once. Yes, I agree. Prosecutor Asogi. Kazuma, isn't it? Kazuma Asogi. You say he's a friend of yours. My best friend? He's the whole reason I got to come to Britain. It was all on his merits. I have nothing but respect for him. Yes, I understand that only the very best students are selected for such opportunities. And I had a fine demonstration of how sharp he is in the proceedings earlier today. He missed nothing. In fact, his flawless performance very much reminded me of his father. Genshi Asugi, Professor. How many times are gonna they, they gonna say that? <laughs> it's true that the aristocracy at the time was the root of numerous grave societal problems. They were abusing their power, playing with the common man as pawns of politics, in economics, in war. In many ways, Asugi was carving out the canker from society that we British couldn't deal with ourselves. Ah, I see. But that's precisely why it makes no sense. Clint Van Zeeks was a noble and upstanding man. He wasn't corrupt. Why did that damned Nipponese have to go and take my brother's life? In spite of having once saved mine. He saved your life? How did that happen? Do a stream of the last game on Too Lazy to buy it and play it? Um, um, do you really want me to stream it? I mean, I'd love to play all the, um, Nanari games again. I love that series. That is exactly what I want in, like, um, a novel slash puzzle game. I want room escape type of things. Ah, oh. Just the last one? And but I love playing um, Virtual Last Reward. Saving your life. It was ten years ago on a foggy night. What was to be the professor's final strike had sent a wave of panic through the capital. So Clint Van Zeeks had already been killed at this point then. Genshin and I were walking down some back streets at a late hour. Of course, at that point, I had no idea of the true nature of the man at my side. All of a sudden... You're coming with us! We were surrounded. All of our assailants were armed with pistols, their faces obscured by scarves. Clint was not only from noble heritage, he was a brilliant prosecutor as well. The scum of London hated the sight of him, and they had no sympathy for his younger brother either. I'd been targeted several times before already. Yes, Fanzich, alright, we've got him! I could hear them murmuring amongst themselves. I knew they were after me. But just when I thought my time had come. If I let them kill you, Clint would never forgive me. It was Asoki's voice, just a whisper in my ear. Bang! Virtue's Last Reward is really, really good. The OST is amazing. It's like so good. That game is just perfect. After that, I don't remember exactly what happened. The next thing I knew, there was silence all around. Genshin lay on the cobbled street. Blood was seeping from his left hand. He'd shielded me. Two days later, they arrested him. On suspicion of being London's most notorious mass murderer ever, the Professor. How awful for you. All at once, I lost the brother I revered and the foreign friend I held in such high regard. I'm so sorry, Lord Van Zeeks. Only thing that's kind of lame is that 3D characters looks re really outdated. I see better stuff in hentai games. I mean, yeah, it is a pretty old game. I think that's originally came out for Vita, right? So it's old. That's the end of my miserable tale. I never thought I'd recount it to anyone. Well, thank you for confiding in me. The professor, the Reaper, and Inspector Gregson. I wonder just how intimately related they all are. I still can't quite believe that Gregson was essentially the Reaper. Giving assassination orders to Giselle Brett? Mr. Naruhodo, let's go and inform my father. I'm sure our government will want to hear about this new information. Oh, that means I get to meet your daddy, Susie. Hooray! Yes, alright. Let's head back to the Great Waterloo Hotel, then. 
Okay, that was taking a long time to um, load. Great, Waterloo Hotel! Wait, a new place? Or just it unlocked? Okay. I thought it yesterday and I think it again today. This place is so princely. It's a wild guess, but I have a feeling you'll think the same tomorrow too. My tea is a finer fragrance than whatever they're serving in the tea room here though, wouldn't you say? Ah, look what we have here. This is an unexpected pleasure. Ah, father. Oh, is this your daddy, Susie? How lovely. What a charming young lady. And you are? Ah, really? So you're the author of The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, are you? That's me. Iris Wilson, at your service, sir. Susie's been such a wonderful friend to me over the last year, you know? Well, Miss Wilson, I must say I read your work regularly and with much interest. Iris actually lives with the Sholmes, you know, father? Is that so? Well, perhaps that goes some way to explain that bright look in your eyes. Monday through Wednesday, your new schedule. Um, for the time being, I guess. I don't know. Like, I wanna. I might even like stream some art days, cause like the reason I haven't been streaming a lot is because I've been working on art stuff and drawing. Like most of the stuff, I probably can't show on screen because I can't show other people what I'm working on. Um, but maybe I'll just like chat and draw while streaming. We'll see what happens. I do want to get back to streaming more though. You wouldn't be smiling so airily if you knew just how bright she is, believe me. Now then, young Naruhodo, it's a pleasure seeing you in action earlier. As an invitee of the symposium, I was allowed to observe from the gallery after I twisted some arms. I must say it was truly an exemplary performance. Oh, well, thank you very much. Although I'm fairly sure you omitted by Kazuma on the end there. No, 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 please don't misunderstand. It was you who impressed me. Really? You didn't miss a step against Dasogi, and we all know how capable he is. Really, to have matured into such a fine defense lawyer in less than a year is quite extraordinary. It's very kind of you to say so, and really nice to hear. What I saw in court today confirmed what I've been hoping for. The favor I mentioned yesterday, Narahodo. I trust you haven't forgotten? You didn't tell me any favor, did you? Oh, no, you did mention something, didn't you? But first, we have something to report, Father. What is his favor? Let me know. Of course, of course. Shall we take tea while we discuss matters further? Hmm. I wonder where Judge Jigoku has got to. Isn't he at the symposium? About the Reaper. Father, do you know about the so-called Reaper of the Bailey? I've heard rumors. Some members of the judiciary explained it all to me yesterday. Of course, when I was visiting a, when I was a visiting student here in London, the Reaper was yet to emerge. Right, he didn't appear until after the case when the visiting students had already returned home. Lord Van Zeeks, who was in the dock today. That was Barrack, the younger brother of Clint Van Zeeks, I believe. That's right, and he's known throughout London as the Reaper, as you've heard, but the truth is... It wasn't him behind all those mysterious deaths, it was somebody else. I see. So what you're saying is, there's been a professional killer at work here. Exactly. Someone by the name of Asashin, in fact. I beg your pardon? Did, did you say Asashin? You mean that Giselle Brett woman who was responsible for killing my great friend? Oh no, a friend of yours was killed. Uh, um, Professor Mikotoba, I think perhaps we shouldn't discuss this right now. Because the friend the professor is talking about is Dr. John H. Wilson. And that's not something we want Iris to find out about. Not like this, anyway. Why don't you just ask her what her dad's name is? Just to confirm that it actually is Dr. Wilson. Ah, I've just remembered something. Biscuits, 
This hotel has the most delicious looking biscuits. That was rather out of the blue. She's doing this deliberately. I think I'll go and see if I can purchase some. I wonder, would you like to come too, Iris? Oh, yes. Just try to leave me behind. So that young girl... is called Iris Wilson, is she? Yes, that's right. And she's the author of all those adventure stories starring the great Detective Sholmes. But the name of the credited author isn't Iris, is it? It's Dr. John H. Wilson. Yes, I know. That's the name of her father, you see. Her father? Dr. John H. Wilson. I was deeply indebted to the man for all the kindness he showed me during my time in London. That's why I was keen to reciprocate and invite him to the Imperial Yume University four years ago. But he was murdered last year by Giselle Brett. Why? Why would the Hand of the Reaper stretch all the way to Japan? Iris knows nothing about that case. But it seems very likely that the victim, Dr. Wilson, was her father. Well, I can't say that we ever spoke about his family, so I don't know if he had a daughter or not. But I think I could say with some certainty, he was never the great detective's partner. So, it could have been another Dr. Wilson, you think? Well, John and Wilson are both common names, after all. Still, it's probably best not to mention this to the young lady until we can be sure. That's what we thought, yes. We're back! With cinnamon biscuits! Oh, they smell delicious, Iris. I think cinnamon will go very well with the tea they serve here, don't you, Susie? Yes, I'm sure you're right, Iris. Speak of the devil, I'm drinking some cinnamon tea too! I haven't seen Judge Jikoku for a while, have you? <laughs> but that guilty is still ringing in my ears. No, now that you mention it, I haven't seen him since this morning, either. I suppose since the symposium's opening was postponed, he'll have gone to explore at the, the Great Exhibition. That reminds me of something you mentioned yesterday. About Judge Shikoku having once been in the dock himself? Ah, yes. It was all tied up but with that accursed trial. The closed trial of Kazuma's father. Seishido was trying to mitigate Genshin's guilt, so he took to the stands to testify. But he got a little carried away and, um, actually managed to break the witness stand. Oh my! He also said some contemptuous words about the British Empire, for which he was charged. Oh dear. Although it's worryingly easy to imagine him doing that. Well, it was all right in the end. He was acquitted and we turned home to Japan together. Thank goodness. Ah, yes, talking of Seishiro. I have a copy of the photograph we all took together here yesterday. Please. Oh, what a lovely picture! It certainly seems to shout, we arrived in Britain! I can remember the photo. Why would this photo be added to evidence? None of us had any idea what was coming when we took that, did we? Why was this photo added to evidence? Worrying? No, no, that's so true. The favor. So, you mentioned a favor that you'd like to ask me. Well, this fateful trial that you're fighting. One way or another, it will be over before long. And when it is, I'd like you to accompany me back, back to Japan. You want me to do... What?! Father, what's the meaning of this? Now, Susato, you should understand. You've seen how our courts works firsthand. Japan's judicial system is in its infancy, especially when it comes to defense. Oh, you mean... The Supreme Court of Judicature is in desperate need of a good defense lawyer. As soon as possible. Really quite urgently, in fact. But I've not even been alone in a year yet. I've read all of Susato's reports, and well aware of your extraordinary talents. And having seen you in action with my own eyes earlier today, there's no question. You, Naruhodo, are precisely the man our country needs. So, you'd be leaving then, Rune? But then, what am I supposed to do, father? 
You came here to serve as Asuki's judicial assistant. Oh yes, she's supposed to be Kasuma's assistant. Our government is still in the process of deciding how to best deal with the situation, though. You've always chosen your own path, Suzato. And I trust your judgment, in this matter also. Father! Please, the pair of you, don't look so downcast. It's merely a suggestion, you understand. A hope, if I'm honest, but I won't force you. All I ask is that you consider it and come to a decision by the time this trial concludes. I still have one more case here, so I'm obviously not going back to Japan yet. Yes, alright. You... you won't leave, will you, Runa? Thought hasn't even crossed my mind. Up until now, I've just been trying to do what I believe to be Cosmo's will. But it turns out that he's alive, so... Where does that leave me? Not one more case. Please tell me this is the last game, at least. This is the last game. Well, if you'll excuse me now. I need to telegram government ministers and the Japanese police with this information about Asashin. Of course, Father. Thank you. I look forward to next month's installment, Miss Wilson. Oh, good. And please, do come to Baker Street sometime, won't you? We'd love to entertain you. I would be delighted. Best of luck for tomorrow, Naruhodo. And... Give my suggestion your full consideration, won't you? Yes, I will. Going back home? No, Kasuma-sama has always meant a great deal to my father. I'm sure he'd love the chance to meet with him and talk with him about all this. Yes, no doubt. Her eyes look so dead. Asashin. Of course, it's so obvious. Ah, it was Shou's talking. How could I have neglected to consider the possibility before now? Ah, Mr. Sholmes! Hurley, where have you been? I joined you all here for tea, of course. What an extraordinary question. I didn't notice you at all. No matter, no matter. Anyway, to the more pressing concerns, Mr. Nadhuru. Oh, yes? I must dispatch a telegram to your country at once. It's a matter of much urgency. To Japan, you mean? Tell me, to whom can I entrust the task? Quickly now, who? Ah, oh, well... My father has just now left to send a telegram to the Imperial Police Bureau of Japan himself. I see. Well, he looks reliable enough for a bearded fellow. He only has a mustache. I don't think what father's sports could be considered a beard, Mr. Sholmes. There's not a moment to lose. Kindly ask your trusty unshaven father to see this is sent. I will, but what is it? No questions at this time, if you please, Mr. Sato. All we can do is pray. That for once, my deduction is awry. Doesn't that imply that your deductions are no- Now then! <laughs> you may be surprised to learn that I am a very busy man. I certainly have no time to hide behind settees and eavesdrop on other people's conversations. But that's what joining us for tea meant. I'll leave the sending of this in your hands then, my dear fellows. Ah, wait a minute, Mr. Sholmes! He just sort of ran off, didn't he? At quite a pace. And left the unpaid bill for his tea behind, too. How much money do I have that I can keep affording all these things? I must catch up with Father at the telegraph office at once. And I'll run on Nicole's cab straight away. They all disappeared to flash. And there was me thinking everyone would be clamoring to pay Mr. Sholmes' bill. That's why they ran away. Okay, um, I can only move. Uh, I'm gonna try going to the Fresno Street room. Oh! Okay, stuff happening. Nope. That happening. Broken window panes. If it turns out that Gregson didn't actually die in here at all, where on earth could he have been killed? Well, one way or another, we must find out, for the inspector's sake. You know, you look awfully pale again today, Mr. Nadahodo. Ugh, sorry. When I start thinking it all through, I conjure up some horrible images in my mind. 
imagination is the culprit here, then. Most certainly guilty. What about the wig? It catches your eye as soon as you enter the room, doesn't it? It's such a bright color, it certainly makes an impression, yes. They can't possibly commit any crimes, can they? I mean, redheads stand out like a sore thumb. I'm afraid with our jet black Japanese hair, we stand out almost as much here in London. Ah, uh, I suppose that's true. Mustn't think of committing any crimes, Mr. Nadahodo. It wasn't. More than your hair, it's your face that stands out in London. Using a candle as a timer device, very ingenious, I must say. Yes, the culprit arranged it so that the firecracker would be set off at 5 o'clock and then left. So that a loud bang was heard at precisely the moment Lord Van Zeeks arrived, yes. If only he hadn't picked up that gun from the floor. Something you probably told yourself once upon a time, I imagine. Yes, I've learned that lesson by bitter experience. I would have turned and run a mile for sure. Which may not have done you any favors either. I feel like these are just gonna be like rah, 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 rehashing the details we already know. Photograph is of Miss Vigil, Mr. Gossip's true identity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Still can't examine anything in the desk, nothing in the fireplace. There are details of cases stretching back over 10 years. History of Lord Vanzig's defeats in court. And then the description, although when you consider everything on board, it's certainly true that all these people had a background, blah 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 blah. Inspector's death. Blah 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 blah. Okay. Update! My sister and niece were let out of the hospital and now are at home for the first time together. Yay! Congratulations! How goes you? Um... I'm good. I'm a bit tired again because I worked out again. I'm try- I found out my arms are super weak. Like, when I do workouts, my legs are strong. Except for my knees, because, you know, arthritis, so I have weak knees. And my ab is, like, pretty okay. I still have a lot of work to do to get my core strong, but, you know, it's still pretty strong. My arms are weak as heck. Like, wow. So I need to start working out my arms more, like, adding that to my exercise routine. So I'm so tired because I did, like, a lot of push-ups and, like, Arm exercises. Looks like you'll have to wander around town asking NPCs for vague hints we already knew. Muscular toast. Yes, my goal is to be so swole. Better fish and chips. Play more of Staples Cuisines. Better chips. Rather disappointed. Yeah, okay, uh, gun. This revolver, just who does it belong to? Police force and the judiciary. Lord Van Zeeks lost his thing. Okay, yeah, this was useless, so let's move. Maybe now I could go to the hospital. Your goal is to become Chie Satonaka? My goal is to become Akihiko Sarada. <laughs> this is the war when Mr. Visual was brought, apparently. To be frank, I'm a little worried about seeing him again. Ah, the lawyer. Hello again. Are you feeling better now, Mr. Visual? Yes, thank you. Somewhat better. Sorry to have caused you to. I mean, it was because of me. If I hadn't exposed your secret and forced you to remember things you'd obviously try to forget. The prosecutor was here until just a mo few moments ago, too. You just missed him. Oh, Kazuma beat us to it. He said much the same as you. He was very apologetic. But the truth is, I brought all this upon myself. Please, don't think like that. Keeping it from Evie, my wife, all these years, I've carried such a sense of guilt. But that's not the worst of it. Over time, I obviously came to deceive myself as well. Then you'll need to take up boxing? Yeah, like, boxing is hard. My friend tried to show me some boxing moves, like, really basic ones. And, like, after, like, two or three repetitions of it, my arms were tired. And I'm just like, how do professional boxers and fighters do it? Like, three minutes doesn't seem like a long time, but when you are constantly punching, it is exhausting. You mean, about your dismissal? Looking back now, 
I'm beginning to think that perhaps Inspector Gregson didn't stumble across me by accident at all. I mean, he compensated me so generously for acting as his stand-in. He was clearly concerned for my well-being and doing what he could to help. So perhaps Gregson knew exactly what had become of Mr. Vigil all along then. I'm sure this is just desserts for ten years of lies and deception, but... It wasn't me that helped the Professor escape ten years ago! It wasn't me! I swear it! I swear it's true! Escape, go! Oh, Mr. Vigil. I'm sure you'd rather not dredge up even more from your past at this time, but... If possible, could you tell us exactly what really happened? I want to. I need to get this all off my chest. I just... want someone to tell me what I should have done. Punch up makes it look so easy. Yeah, because, like, you're only doing, like, once at a time, but if you're, like, constantly moving and punching, it's just... it's hard. I was looking to buy a punching bag today, spooky coincidence. <laughs> yeah, my, um, my friend actually got a punching bag and I tried it out. Oh my gosh. Super tiring. My arms are just that weak. I really should exercise my arms more, seeing, you know, that's how important they are in everyday life. Rexon's request. Inspector Gregson was obviously engaged in a special operation of some sort. He was investigating something that even Scotland Yard couldn't know about. Details of the Reaper's marks, yes. It was when he had to carry out those investigations. Ah! Oh my gosh! Whoa, I skipped too much dialogue. Those investigations that I would take his identification and impersonate him. You'd pretend to be the inspector and carry out investigations on his behalf? Oh no, never. A common street peddler couldn't possibly carry out a proper police investigation. All I would do is go to the specified location and make a little hoo-ha. Just something to leave an impression, so everyone there would think a detective called Gregson was here. Speaking of Punch-Out, funny story, my cousin has a son named Mac. I always call him Little Mac. <laughs> little Big Mac. Oh, excuse me. So that's what you were doing on the day prior to the incident? Yes, he asked me to make an appearance at the park on Lime Street for the Red-Headed League event. So as usual, I flashed the inspector's identification around and was very vocal about my presence. But then you were taken prisoner by those red-headed fraudsters. Yes. So, you would always make a point of showing Gregson's identification and generally being loud? That's what the inspector asked me to do, so yes. Well, that's one way of becoming a legendary detective, I suppose. Not a good one, though. And as you know, I suffered this bruising around my neck at their hands. But the following day, they kept their word and released me. Without returning the inspector's identification to you, however. We had arranged to meet in Fresno Street room at 5 that day so I could report back to the inspector. But at the agreed time, that's when I heard the gunshots. Prison escape. It was at midnight on 17th June, 10 years ago. That was the time scheduled for the execution. But the professor's execution never actually took place, did it? Or rather, the execution itself must have been used to effect the plan of escape. I hardly dare to imagine what a chilling plan it was. Barclay was renowned for being the highest security prison in the country. Everything that went in or out of the place was searched multiple times. But there was one notable exception. Or rather, one notable loophole, something that was never questioned. I have a feeling I know what that loophole was now. The coffins into which the bodies of the executed convicts were placed, correct? Yes. Once the coroner had confirmed the death of a con condemned convict, the body was taken in his coffin for immediate burial in Lowgate Cemetery just behind the prison. The chief warder first had to sign the necessary papers. And after that, no member of staff was permitted to touch the coffin containing the body again. When the executions took place, only the executioner and the coroner were permitted inside the chamber. I would wait in the adjacent room for word that the condemned was convict was dead. So it's the- okay, so obviously Courtney Scythe was the coroner who was like, yo, the professor's dead. And we know she was being blackmailed by, um, Strongheart. Or at least I, I think she was being blackmailed by Strongheart. So who was the executioner? 
Because he was clearly in on it too. I don't think they made mention of that yet. On that occasion, once I had that confirmation, I went into the mortuary to find a lone coffin as usual. The procedure, procedure was that I would sign the paperwork having checked the coffin, then nail it shut. But for some reason that day, the coffin was already nailed shut. No. I didn't think anything of it at the time. I assumed that my deputy must have checked the coffin and nailed it shut before I arrived. So, you mean, the coffin contained... Yes, I can only imagine that Asogi, having escaped his execution somehow, was alive inside the coffin. The coffin was then taken out through the main gates and deposited in Lowgate Cemetery. Presumably, there wouldn't have been enough air inside to breathe for long. So in the early hours following the burial, somebody dug up the coffin again to set Genshin free. But in the end... He was fatally shot in the graveyard anyway. What on earth really happened in Lowgate Cemetery that night, I wonder? So... <sighs> the Executioner and Courtney Scythe faked Genshin's death. He was buried alive in the coffin, and someone would dig him out to get him out, and still pretend like the professor was dead. But Enoch Drebber came upon his body, and then somebody shot him so that he actually died, so that they could be like, Haha, the professor is dead. But you know, weird thing, instead of killing Genshin, why didn't you just kill Drebber? Because whoever, whoever planned this whole thing obviously wanted Genshin alive. So, if, and Enoch was alone. Well, they didn't know Madame Sue Spells was there, so she could have still been, like, a witness after they left. But, you know, if she wasn't around and Enoch was there, they could have just killed him. But they didn't. This is Danganronpa levels of complicated. Is it really? Oh, dang. I hope Danganronpa isn't that complicated. I'm afraid I really don't know. All I can say with certainty are two things. Asuki couldn't possibly have escaped that way without help from somebody working in a prison. And that somebody... was not me. And it was Barricade in. It was Barricade in. Obviously you knew- ah! Obviously you knew the man then. The professor, I mean. Genshin Asuki. Yes, I remember him well, in fact. Would you mind telling us what you know? Well, having been condemned to death as he was, any contact I had with the man was short, obviously. After that trial, which was carried out from carried out behind closed doors, attended only by elite members of the judiciary, it called for his execution to be carried out at the earliest possible opportunity. The outcome of the trial was set from the beginning, wasn't it? It was a time of delicate diplomacy when Britain and Japan were in the process of signing an important treaty. That meant that this potentially dis establishing case had to be dealt with swiftly and discreetly. The man had less than a week in total. As I was the chief warder, I oversaw his short stay in the cells until his final hour. I remember being struck deeply by his noble character and incredible resilience. What do you mean exactly? He was a killer of many men, but he was always quiet and polite. He was a gentleman and a man of intellect. In fact, I couldn't bring myself to believe what he'd done, so I'd asked him one day. Here's five members of the aristocracy whose lives are taken. Were you really responsible? I'm guilty of, I'm guilty of the unforgivable crime of ending another human's life, yes. He's not admitting that he was the professor. The crazy thing about Danga Mambo is that you can figure out who did it before the trial starts because you get all the facts. Oh! Okay, so that's not like a... I mean, we're kind of getting facts evidence here, too. Is it similar or no? The following day, the closed trial took place, and the verdict was no surprise. Guilty. That night, when he was brought back to his cell, I saw something. Something unusual. Something unusual? What? The last will and testament of Genshin Asogi. Asogi's will. Why would that be weird? He's dying. As I said, it was on the night following his trial after he'd been found guilty. I was doing the rounds of the cells, and when I looked into Asogi's, I noticed that he seemed to have a sheet of paper in his hand. Ah, his last will and testament then, presumably. 
As soon as he noticed me, he hurriedly shoved it behind his back. But why did you find that so unusual? Isn't it normal for a man to pen a will when he knows his death is nigh? Yes, that's true. But there are special conditions to Asugi's incarceration, you see. What sort of conditions? Well, even though he was held in cell design for condemned inmates, he was allowed to keep his personal effects with him, with one exception. Really? He was allowed his things? That is unusual, certainly. Of course, he'd been convicted of killing five members of the aristocracy. But at the time, he was a guest in our country from the Empire of Japan. The powers that were that be were determined that his final days shouldn't be needlessly uncomfortable. And what was the exception you mentioned to the personal effects he was allowed? That's the point. He wasn't permitted to have writing materials. Specifically, no pens or paper. So, he was prevented from leaving any written record of what happened to him? Yes, that was the long and short of it. I have no idea where he had turned that paper. And any writing materials would have been confiscated from him upon his incarceration. As I said, he hid the paper behind his back and then he pleaded with me. What did you just hide the paper on your back? Please, please turn a blind eye. This is my lifeline. Or, you know it's against the rules. You're the only person who has seen. If you just agree to keep quiet. Alright then, but what's on the paper? The last will and testament. This will is the only weapon I have left out. Why are there so many white flashes this episode? Stop it. Only a couple of times do you get something after the trial starts, but you can put two and two together. Mm. Let's see if I'm smart when I finally play Dango Bongo. How can a will be a weapon? So I decided to pretend I'd see nothing, and then let him keep his will. I need some drink. But then later, it just seemed to vanish without trace. What? What do you mean it vanished? Ah, a jasmine tea. It would seem that isn't the end of the story of this mysterious will. The will's disappearance. I was the only person who saw Asuki's will, but... But somehow it disappeared was after Asugi's execution. Which was actually an elaborate jailbreak. The warders gathered up Asugi's possessions that were in his cell. They were all sent to be sent back to his family home in Japan, you see. The poor Kazuma-sama. And you're saying that it wasn't anywhere to be found among his personal effects? The will, I mean. That's right, though I didn't search through them myself. But Governor Caden was livid. He was screaming, It can have disappeared completely. S See? Caden was in on it. He's... <gasps> he placed the blame on Vigil. Okay, he... Okay, yeah. I mean, I know I said it before that Caden was in on it, but this confirms that Caden was in on it. It doesn't quite make sense, though, does it? In what way? Well, we'd understood that only Mr. Vigil was aware of the will's existence. In which case, how did the prison governor know to look for it? Oh yes, you're right. I really don't know how he knew. But it certainly seemed as though he knew of the will's existence from the outset. Only he didn't refer to it as a will. What he said was... The Asogi Papers. The Asogi Papers? I really can't tell you anything of the subsequent events. Because, well, of what happens. Your dismissal, and the way you blocked it all from your memory. I've forgotten all this until today. I don't suppose it's relevant to the case, though. Well, anyway, thank you very much for sharing it with us, Mr. Vigil. We're very grateful. I'm afraid there's really no little more I can tell you. My wife Evie will be here shortly, so I do hope I don't appear rude, but... No, no, not at all. Thank you again. But what will become of you now? Well, impersonating a police officer is a criminal offence, of course. I imagine that once I'm fully recovered, I shall be arrested. So sorry. Don't be, please. This is all my own doing. I always knew that this day would come. Well, I wish you well. Goodbye, Mr. Vigil. Ah! I got, like, sunburn on my feet. Oh! 
uh, before you go, there's just one thing. But yeah, I got sunburned on my feet. Um, very first time in my life I got sunburned. And now my skin is peeling! It's gross! Ew! Oh, yes? What is it? The Asuki Papers. I'd be very grateful if you'd make no mention of the things I told you about them. Presumably for some good reason? It's my understanding that their very existence is a closely guarded secret. It became known that I'd remembered. Well... Could be rather troublesome, I think. I understand. Some sort of will that Genshin Nasuki penned just before his death. Which the man himself claimed was his last weapon. I wonder... Perhaps that had something to do with his plan to escape. If there's anyone who might know more about a document that Cosmo's father left behind... It would be Mr. Vision's governor! And we know precisely where we must go. Back to Barkley Prison. <laughs> Look at him just chilling out on the bed. Okay, well, thanks for that. I'm sorry, but it's just... Oh, uh, it feels so weird. Oh, it looks so weird. I didn't turn Google on. Shut up. Well, at least he seems to be on the mend. You know... His disguise as Mr. Gossip was really quite masterful, wasn't it? I can't remember anything about it except for the floppy lip. I imagine not even his wife would have recognized him. Perhaps, but did he really have to take it quite so far? Yes, yeah, so that no one found out it was him. Duh. Okay. Prison Governor's office. Ooh! This feels so weird! Ugh, back again, are you? Um, yes, hello. I've heard all about your investigations. I read the report just now. You found him, eh? Vigil. Ah, ah, ew, gross. Sorry. Oh, I should really stop touching my foot. Yes, luckily. Well, anywho. The lighting doesn't work here no more, so your case is not to do with Barclay. I wouldn't like you to get the wrong idea about that. Of course, yes. Mr. Vigil stopped working here ten years ago now, so... Yes, we've seen his dismissal notice, haven't we? He was given the chop. Hi, Kimmer. You know, you came very well. So, how about the wee handcuff biscuits? Oh, they really are like little handcuffs. And as hard as irons, too. So, what's brought you to do in here today? Well, there's something we else we'd like to ask you about, actually. Is that so? We believe there might have been a document that disappeared from the Genshin Asuki cell. I think it's been called the Asuki Papers or something? Did I no say? Bruxton's death is not to do with things that might have happened at Barclay. Leave the past and past, laddie. It's not for the about with relevant details. His expressions changed completely. We're clearly onto something here. Ten-year-old legacy. Murderous botched execution, and the whole miserable escape. It was Barclay's darkest hour, eh? A shocking embarrassment. Because Convict had a collaborator on the prison staff, you mean. Everyone has such low voices, I need to change it up. Sorry, uh, my throat is killing me, so I'm giving him a different voice. Hey, for shame. The coroner who confirmed the death of the man after his execution caught his eye. And my chief warder at the time, Vigil, who was in charge of the whole affair. But Mr. Vigil says he didn't know anything about it. Deep toast. Oh, throat hurting toast. Perhaps we wouldn't say otherwise, eh? More handcuffs. Oh, how could I say no? You can never have too much iron in your diet. When Mr. Vigil was handed his dismittals notice out of the role of what had happened. He was so despairing, he jumped out of your office window, didn't he? I didn't like to say, but that's just Vigil trying to get out of it. You know, thinking he wouldn't have jumped from the shock of his crimes being exposed, eh? I do. You wouldn't say otherwise, would you? Of course, I can't have shown all responsibility myself. I shouldn't have let, let him deceive me. His accent is crazy! 
Actually, there's barely anybody that kins what went on at the time now. With Gregson having been murdered and Dr. Scythe forbidden from having any visitors. No visitors? Someone obviously doesn't want her giving anything away. Strongheart doesn't want her giving things away. Great voice acting. I'm so <laughs> Thank you. That sounds like something you order at a tanning salon. <laughs> well, we're not going home empty-handed. And I'm in a dream of sending you packing with Doc Kimmer. Here, take a handcuff or two. Oh, well it would be rude to say no. I wouldn't want to become anemic. I suppose, if there's anybody who might still care about what happened back then... It'd be that last from the Forensic Division, Maria Gory. Maria Gory? Is it Maria or Mariah? I think um, English people say it Mariah. Oh, I saw his daughter. She didn't have no more, just the one. The wee bands followed her mom's footsteps. You didn't ever see her with that scalpel in her hand. Ah. Who's the dad? Wait a minute, what is this? Ah, where does she spring from? And did she just call the doctor mama? Dr. Sai's daughter, Mariah Gory. We could do with talking to her. Gory. So, she's Dr. Sai's daughter, but her surname is Gory? Hey, this is her family history, I'm sure, but I didn't care in the ancient of it. Well, I didn't mean to push that. She grew up watching her man work with the bodies of folk who died in strange circumstances. Decided to do the same with her own life. I can't understand it myself. Perhaps she was driven by a deep respect for her mother. Perhaps. Anywho, she was in charge of Gregson's autopsy, I believe. Right, and the coroner responsible for this incomplete report. Emma told me once that the wee lad she always loved her mom's stories about cutting my bodies. There's even a rumor that she used to listen to the funeral march as a lullaby. Well then, perhaps her mother might have told her about the autopsy from the case ten years ago. Ah, yet she does a fighting chance at last. After all, it was a life-changing case for all of us. We really need to speak to Miss Gory herself about this, I think. Well, thank you very much. I'm no happy about any part of this. It took years for London us to finally forget the whole professor business. Can you know gear up on this, laddie? Stop asking pointless questions. Why, so we don't uncover your deception? I'm sorry, I don't like dredging up these painful memories for everyone. You need to stay away, new. Leave me alone and didn't come back here, eh? Never! The Asuki papers. How'd you come to keen about that, lady? There's no many folk in, even here in the prison who've heard of those papers. Ah, uh, well, I can't tell what Mr. Vigil told me. I'm afraid our sources must remain confidential, sir. Hmm. We've been led to believe the papers are actually a last will and testament, is that right? The professors, or rather, Genshin Asugis. Hey, that's right. I well informed, Jimmy. Oh, is that the end of the silent treatment? But then after the convict's execution, it mysteriously vanished from the cell, didn't it? Hey, Vish, no. You're off a half- You're off a half cock there. I think you didn't quite get your facts straight. It was there in the cell, exactly where it should have been. Oh, not what we heard elsewhere. Let me just have a wee hook around in here. I'm sure I can find it. Hey, here you are. See? The last will and testament of Gensin Nashogi, written with a calligraphy brush. Of course, I can't read a word of those Japanese squiggles. But I mind it says he leaves all his worldly possessions to his son back in his homeland. Yes, that's correct. That's the gist of it. So these are the Yasugi papers. Hey, of course they are. Papers written by Yasugi and they dead about it. There's no mystery here, laddie. That's your lot. After all the stramish of that sister of an execution, we sent the man's possessions back to his clan in Japan. That was the end of it. I think we ought to make a record of this, Mr. Nadohodo, just in case. Yasugi papers. Why do I feel like he's lying? One thing before you go on your way, Mr. Naruhodo. Oh, yes? Those papers are not to do with Gregson's death. I prefer it if you didn't make no mention of the most of the office, or rather. I would just prefer it. 
considered it an order from the highest levels or, or government. I understand. Cause you're hiding something, you shady. I guess you also get here by request that upon my death, any and all material possessions and wealth belonging to me in London will be delivered to my son, Kazuma Asogi, in the Empire of Japan. It is with deep sadness that I accept my fate in this foreign land in the knowledge that I will never see my homeland or family again, but I regret nothing about my chosen path. I feel like this is a lie, but whatever, we will leave. Uh, where are we going now? I don't think we have to see him again. Nothing there. Uh, I don't know. Um, let's just go to Solmza Suite. Wrong. Who did I need to see? Let's just go here. Okay, we're supposed to come here. No arguments, pros Prosecutor Asugi. We'll continue with the trial exactly as instructed. Is that clear? Perfectly. It's Kasuma-sama! Defying Lord Strongheart by the sound of it, he never did know when to back down. On your way now, Asogi. My lord. Kasuma. Stay and talk with me for a while, Kazuma. Don't just leave. He left without saying a word. Yes, what are you doing here? Oh, um, well, um, I was just hoping to ask you a few questions if you don't mind. I wanted Van Zeke's trial concluded today. But Pro Prosecutor Asuki's unwelcome inquiries are going to make it longer than necessary. Unwelcome inquiries? As a result, I'm losing even more precious time. Currently 2 hours, 55 minutes, and 41 seconds. 42. 43. We must resolve everything before 3 hours have passed, Mr. Nadohodo. In a miraculous not even 5 minutes? Anyway, I can't let the man's obvious bad mood put me off. I need information. What could we possibly get from him? The Reaper. Does Prosecutor Asuki believe that Lord Van Zeeks is the Reaper? I wouldn't know. It was ten years ago, in that fateful closed trial, that Lord Van Zeeks made a name for himself among the judiciary. In the next trial he fought, he lost. It meant the ringleader of a criminal organization was acquitted, thanks to all the jurors being under duress. That's awful. The man's freedom was short-lived. He lasted just three days. Yes, let me see. He died in a rock slide at his place of work, I believe. Correct. That was the inauguration of the Reaper of the Bailey. And people le believed Lord Van Zeeks was responsible? He was brought to trial himself, but it was soon to have been an accident. They must have had a solid alibi then. Nevertheless, the mysterious deaths continued. In total, 16 persons perished in unusual circumstances, ostensibly at the hand of the Reaper. That's a long run of coincidences. Well, the Reaper's true identity may well be revealed by this trial. And the impact that revelation would have on the British public cannot be understated. Is that why it's a Kroll's trial? Precisely. You are so shady, what is your deal? This country hasn't seen a closed trial for 10 years. And the last one was the professor's. The Stop repeating Genshin Asagi is the professor! We get it! Stop it! Correct. Actually, we heard that originally. You were going to prosecute that trial yourself, Lord Strongheart. Van Seeks entreated me to relinquish the prosecution to him, that he might avenge his brother's death. And here we are, ten years later. With the son of the man Van Zeeks had condemned, now looking to avenge his father's death in the same way. They do say that what goes around comes around. However, it would seem that the New York prosecutor is harboring some ulterior motive as well. Asma is? I like my organization to run smoothly, in the exact manner that I prescribe. As with the giant clock in here, I won't tolerate a single cog being out of step with the others. Ah, so that's what all these gears are about in here. If the young man refuses to mesh with the other parts of my great machine, I'll be forced to take steps. What do you mean? Not something with which you need to concern yourself. In any case... 
All your questions will be answered tomorrow. You're hiding something shady. Now, I shall have to ask you to excuse me. As of this moment, I've been delayed from attending my next meeting by precisely three hours. Oh my, that is a long time. And I hold you entirely responsible. Even though we miraculously managed to fit everything in not even five minutes? Um, I wonder if you might agree to us, um, talking with Pros Prosecutor Asugi? Discussions between the defense and prosecution outside of the courtroom are generally frowned upon. However, I will make an exception in this case. Now go. You can find him in his office. Oh, thank you. Let's go to see him at once, Mr. Narahodo. Kasuma's my best friend in the world, but... I'm really not all sure I know how to talk to him at the moment. I know how you talk to him! You find him, you go up to him, and you kiss his face! <laughs> Give him a big smooch! And say, I missed you, buddy. Oh, a diagram of the place. So, this is the office of Prosecutor Asugi now, is it? Kasuma-sama is doing so well for himself. This is just Barrick's room! Even though he's always forced to kneel on the floor Japanese-style in that dark corner, it's his habit to sit Seiza-style whenever he's working. Hi, Kasuma! Ouch. I thought it wouldn't be long before you paid me a visit, Rujunosuke. I was right about what I said, wasn't I? Sorry? That you have all the makings of a great defense lawyer. Well, I always believed that you'd fulfill your dream of advocating in the British courts. I just never imagined for one second that it would be as a prosecutor. Seeing you stand in a foreign country courtroom so gallantly realizing your dream, Kasuma-sama. I'm truly happy for you. And I'm truly thankful to you, Judicial Assistant Mikotoba. Ryunosuke, I always thought it would be fun for you and I to shake up the British legal system a little together. This isn't quite how I envisaged it, but... I suppose it's just another twist of fate. I've learned a lot of things during my time in London, about how Susato-san's father was himself a visiting student here once, along with Judge Jikoku, and about what happened with your father. Then you'll have no difficulty understanding why I had no choice, why I had to find a way to get Britain, to get to Britain as a visiting student myself. I want to hear it from you, Kazuma. As you wish, Ryunosuke Naruhodo. But first, give me a big smooch. Your disappearance. It's getting on for a year now, since what happened on the SS Burya. We were heading across the oceans from Japan to Great Britain. When a bizarre series of coincidences led to those tragic events. I thought I'd lost my best friend forever. I must have been unconscious for a long time. When I awoke, I was lying on a bed. It was a narrow little room. There was a posy of flowers by the pillow. It took me a little while to realize that I was in the cabin of a ship. I slipped out of the room and headed up onto the deck. Were you already suffering from amnesia at that point? Yes. I didn't know what happened or where I was. It was just this voice inside my head. You have something you have to do. Something no one else can know about. Go to Great Britain. Your task awaits you there. It was a calling I couldn't ignore. It compelled me relentlessly. Out on the deck, I saw that I was on a huge steamship and we were docked in a large port. It must have been Hong Kong. Yes, it must have been. Presumably just before they were due to carry your body off the ship. I had no idea of the situation, but I did have the feeling that this was in some way my last chance. So I concealed myself among the disembarking passengers and went ashore. Then I disappeared into the crowded streets of that foreign port city. So I could plan my onward journey to Great Britain. A journey to Britain. Just under a year ago, with all my past memories lost to me, I was left behind in Hong Kong. Everything was was foreign to me. The sights, the sounds, the smells. My head reeled. I was truly at a loss. I realized now that I'd escaped as a dead man, with nothing but the clothes on my back. No money, of course. 
Oh, how terrifying for you. Luckily, though, I had two feathers in my cap. One being your knowledge of English, I suppose. That's right. And on the back of that, I was able to pick up some work as a deckhand on a cargo ship. Eventually, after calling at countless spot ports, I finally arrived at Dover. That must have been some three months ago now. Your formidable tenacity of purpose showing itself again. I mean, the man had lost his memory and had literally nothing to his name. But he still managed to make his way to London on the opposite side of the world. Of course, I had no idea why I had moved heaven and earth to get here at that point. So, how did you end up becoming Lord Van Zeek's apprentice then? That can only be called an extraordinary stroke of luck, really. You see, I was stopped at the border because I had no papers. It took me straight to Scotland Yard. And by sheer coincidence, Lord Strongheart was there to attend a meeting. That's when the second feather at my cap came into play. Would that have been your knowledge of the law? Yes, exactly. Lord Strongheart was curious about an Easterner with intimate knowledge of British law. He took me back with him to the Supreme Court and assigned me to the prosecutor's office. And then, nine days ago... You finally got your memory back after the trial involving Drubber. Yes, I did. Your father, Genshin. Your father, Genshin! The professor! <laughs> Ever since I met you at Yume, you talked about your dream. Mark my words, Shunosuke, I'll be chosen as a visiting student, maybe fly away to Great Britain someday. Did you know the entire time about what happened to your father here? 16 years ago. So many white flashes! Stop it! <gasps> oh, tiny Kazuma! He's so cute! When my father left on that exciting trip to Great Britain, I was just a boy. We took a photograph together of the day before his departure. It's my last memory of him. But what I remember most about my father is his unswerving sense of justice. Six years after he left, a gentleman called at our family home. He told me that Genshin, my father, had been taken ill in England and passed away. It was Professor Mikotoba, your father, Suseto-san. My! Ever since then, the professor was very good to me. He even helped to fund my university education at Yume. I'll be, for I'll be forever in his debt. But nevertheless, I just couldn't bring myself to believe what he told me. Oh. Then one day, a letter arrived at our house from Britain. There was no indication of a sender, so I opened it, assuming it was from an old acquaintance of my father. What I read in that letter changed my entire life. What did it say? It said that my father had been a mass murderer, and the writer accused- writer cursed the Yasuki name. Oh no! As a result of that letter, I found out what had been hidden from me all those years. Letter from Britain. Presumably, the letter was sent from a relative of one of the victims. If whoever it was had been a member of the judiciary, he could have been present at the closed trial. The letter revealed that my father had been sentenced to death, executed for being a killer. I'm so sorry you had to find out that way. I imagine the British government did its very best to silence whoever sent that letter. But someone who knew the truth and couldn't bear the resentment was always going to be a problem. But still, it could have been written by anyone. Why would you believe such a thing? There was a newspaper cutting included with the letter. It was the first either it was the first I've ever heard of the professor and his terrible killing spree. Well, what did my father have to say about that letter? I couldn't bring myself to show it to him. What? Why not? Because he deliberately concealed the truth from me by telling me my father was taken by a fatal illness. That couldn't have been easy for him, and he'd done it out of consideration for my feelings. So instead, I showed the letter to Judge Jikoku. Ah, to the other visiting student. He faltered for the briefest of moments, but then he just laughed the letter off. But in that moment, I saw it on his face. He was undeniably shocked, shaken momentarily before recovering his poise. A year later, my bereaved mother succumbed to the strain of grief, and she too passed away. That's when I made up my mind that one day, without fail, I would cross the streets, seas to Britain, and seek the truth for myself. The truth about my father, Genshin Asugi. And I wouldn't let anyone stand in my way. Oh, Kazuma-sama. Uh, the Reaper's Trial. 
How did you only sunburn your feet? I didn't just sunburn my feet. It was my feet, a little bit of my back, and a little bit of my arm. And um, my shoulders. And the reason I sunburned it, uh, I put sunblock on, but I guess I didn't put enough on because I, I was at the beach. So um, I stepped into the water, and I guess like after I kind of dried it off, um, the sunscreen wasn't just like there anymore, so it really burned my feet. <sighs> what we learned today in court turned things completely on their head. It was an impressive piece of lawyering, do you know Skenadhodo? Lord Van Zeeks isn't the Reaper, you know. I almost don't want to believe it myself, but it turns out that Inspector Gregson himself, the victim, was. It's clear that the Inspector was behind the Reaper's activity all along. What? You mean you knew? The real question is, who's been giving orders to the Inspector? Yes, Barak Van Zeeks is the real Reaper. And I know that ten years ago it was him who decided my father must be a mass murderer and sent him to his grave. No, he was merely seeing that justice was done as the law dictates. He's not to blame. Ultimately, it's people who condemn people. The law is just a tool that they use to do it. And when a man condemns another, he must take responsibility for his actions. Of course he must. But I know for certain that my father would never have taken another man's life. Hazuma. On the contrary, my father's life was taken by the Reaper. And that's all we're gonna say about that. Is there anything I could present to him? How about if I present his will? Asuma, what do you make of this? Okay, yeah. He doesn't care about his, um... Father's will. Okay, then we're moving. Uh, back to Sholmes' suite. Nope. Okay, so I guess there's more I have to do with Kazuma. But what? Uh, I'm a red photograph. Identification, pocket watch, photograph of the victim. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, walk through time because I'm so confused. Um. Okay, did that? The. That- wait, what? Oh, okay! Um... I have to present the autopsy report to him, for some reason. This came up in trial, didn't it? As something a little dubious, I mean. The fact that no time of death was recorded on G Inspector Gregson's autopsy report. Yes, there were some unexpected turns in the courtroom earlier. The suggestion you came up with certainly took everyone by surprise. The idea that the victim died the previous day at some other location is quite something. Well, considering when the pocket watch had stopped and the scorch marks on the candle, it's certainly a distinct possibility. The evidence and the scene both point to it. To be honest, it bothered me too. So I paid a visit to the autopsy room earlier. The coroner responsible wasn't there, but I got a name. It's Dr. Gori. Um, if it wouldn't trouble you, Kasuma-sama, we'd very much like to speak with the coroner, too. Of course, the last thing I want is for anything to be brushed under the carpet. Scotland Yard's autopsy laboratory is behind Lowgate Cemetery. Lowgate Cem- By Barclay Prison, you mean? We've been there before! <laughs> ah, you know it, do you? The prison where my father was incarcerated and robbed of his life. Kasuma-sama- Okay, stop repeating his name. Well, thank you. We'll pay a visit to the laboratory later today. Okay, now we're done. Because now we're getting this conversation. Yunosuke, I want to thank you. What for? For this. You safeguarded the soul of the Yasugi clan. Well, it is a famous sword that's been in your family for generations. My only slight regret is that I never got the chance to draw it before I returned it to you. 
Padamo is said to have been forged by a master swordsmith during the Sengoku Warren States period. I come from a long lineage of warriors, many of whom were expert swordsmen. Well then, you're a chip of the old block, I'd say. This blade, Kanuma, is the symbol of the Asuki clan's honor and might. Apparently, one of my father's apprentices even took the blade's name for a surname. Really? Kaduma? It does sound formidable, that's for sure. Ha! Ah! Did I just- The sword's name is Karma! Oh my gosh! Sixteen years ago, when my father was a visiting student here in London, he had the sword forever at his side. Which is why it means so much to me that I have it by my side again now, too. And that is all thanks to you. It was an honor. Now, I have preparations to make for tomorrow. Perhaps that's a little too much. Kazuma, you've... changed. No, Dunosuke, I haven't changed at all. It's you who changed. I can completely understand your resentment of Lord Van Zeeks given what happens. But the fact is, those events and this case are, well, unrelated? Is that what you want to say? How can you be so sure? What do you mean? Never mind. That man is a reaper, and it's for that reason that the inspector was killed. I'm going to prove as much in court tomorrow, by whatever means necessary. I can't let you do that, Kazuma. I know you'll do what you have to as a lawyer, but I'm sure I don't need to tell you that I won't be taking any prisoners in the courtroom. I would expect nothing less. Until tomorrow, then, in the old Bailey. Don't leave me! Oh, I have to leave you. Smooch! Bye! Forensic Laboratory. Kazuma, Two Face, kill him. He's not Two Face! Oh my gosh, her dolls are cute! This place really is creepy, isn't it? Well, being a dead room, it's probably full of the spirits of the dissected. I like how they never explain anything to each other. I mean, you really can't because you're a defense lawyer and a prosecutor. You can't really talk about the case outside of it, outside of the courtroom. But I still like Kazuma. He's still a good boy. But actually, there's a rather pleasing scent of roses in the air. Well, being a dead room... The coroner probably needs a bold scent like that to mask the odor of death. Um, Iris, do you think we should change the subject? They just explain it to each other off screen. And they smooch too! What was that? Ah, oh, now my foot hurts from peeling my skin off. Ah! Oh! I peel too much off. I'm sorry for the gross details, but ah, uh, it hurts. Um, Dr. Gory? I don't remember the voice I gave her, so... What? Um, that noise before. Sharpening my tools. I'd be dead meat if I didn't keep a perfectly keen edge on them. Right. I'm following the collagen fibers into dermis and expertly sharpened scalpel. Cuts like cheese. Would you like a demonstration? Oh, yes please. I'd love to see. Then, I think you'll do nicely. Huh? No! No, I wouldn't do nicely at all. I mean, maybe some other time. <laughs> Was that a tut? Well, we came here to ask questions, so... Painful toast. I am in pain! Time of death. Um, we have actually met before. I'm a lawyer, if you remember. You're not dead yet. What? The mama said I wasn't to cut you open. She's so strict about things like that. Well, good. Dr. Scythe has some scruples, at least. Oh dear. Looks like she's not interested in talking to us, for the time being, anyway. For the time being? You mean, until we die? I hope that's a way off. Sorry, but I wasn't planning on dying anytime soon. <laughs> Surely there's some less drastic way of making her listen. Okay, am I supposed to present something to her? 
Uh, uh, I'll just present the autopsy report. I remember when you got scared when someone who was asleep woke up. He, I thought he was a corpse, and then he just started moving. That was creepy. I haven't someone say t this much since that boring brick Shinjiro Aragaki. <gasps> I mean, he wasn't my favorite. But you know, I don't think he's that boring. Dr. Gori, we actually came here to ask you about this. It was very good. Good? Sorry? The skin didn't snag my blade once, and very little mess. The joints dislocated easily, and his muscle tissue was a pleasure to work with. We can skip those details. But there is one thing about the report that's caught my attention. You don't seem to have recorded the time of death. Whoa! That's not my fault. Oh, that made me jump. Then please, tell us what happens. Time of death again. So why doesn't this autopsy report include the victim's time of death then? It's really the most crucial detail. I was told not to write it. What? By whom? Mayor Strongheart, the Joe Chief Justice. He came here. I knew it! Frickin' he's hiding something! But what? Lord Strongheart came. He said that from the witness statements about the gunshot and the other evidence, it was obvious. The man clearly died at 5pm on 1st November when the gunshot was heard. But that's not the time of death you wrote on the report. You didn't write anything. Was there some reason you didn't include it? He's probably like, oh, do this or else you're never gonna see your mom again. Dr. Gori, if you're hiding something under Lord Strongheart's instructions, then sooner or later, you're going to go the same way as your mother. Time of death, 5.60pm. <laughs> wow, she's kind of cute, I guess. She is kind of cute. Give it here, then. Hmm? What's she scribbling so furiously? There. You've... you've written... What? What's she written? Tell us! Indeterminate? What? The details of the autopsy report have been updated. Indeterminate? Wait, uh, let's check the- ah! I almost dropped my controller. Is it at the end of the list now? Nope. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Time and tournament. Evidence suggests measures may have been taken to disguise the time of death. <gasps> I've been getting into Pokemon Unite. You want to join me? I haven't been really into Pokemon lately. I mean, I occasionally still play Pokemon Go. But yeah, no new Pokemon news has been exciting to me. Which is sad, because I still love Pokemon. What do you mean by that? Why was the time of death indeterminate? When the specimen was brought in, it was still fresh. But the time of death could easily have coincided with when the gunshot was heard. But there was one small discrepancy. What discrepancy? There was some fried fish in the pocket of the specimen's overcoat. And that fish had started to rot. What? If the victim liked fried fish, he presumably liked to eat it before it went off. Well, yes. What are you really trying to say? It's possible that someone tried to manipulate the apparent time of death. Manipulate the... Is that even possible to do? Theoretically, if you were to chill the body in ice, you could delay the onset of putrefaction. And if the overcoat wasn't on the body at the time, then only the fish would have started to rot. With today's science, it's not yet possible to determine if the body was chilled or not. But today's science is advanced enough to let you freeze a corpse, it seems. But surely... To chill a corpse like that would require an enormous electrical refrigerator. And I don't imagine many households in London are equipped with such a device. No, definitely not. But maybe in a factory, or some other special places. I don't recall seeing any factories or such like on Fresno Street, though. I wonder if the inspector's body had been chilled somehow. What might the actual time of death have been? 
couldn't say for sure. But at the most, it might have been a day earlier. No. In other words, it would corroborate your previous deduction, Mr. Narahodo. That Inspector Gregson was killed the day before his body was discovered at a different location. Did you inform Lord Strongheart of this possibility? He simply said there was no electrical refrigerators of that size in the vicinity. I get how you feel, but unite a MOBA so it's not too bad. I mean, it's really bad. It's like a baby's first MOBA, but it ain't too bad for a beginner MOBA. I have never played a MOBA. Oh yes, one other thing. It's something the governor of Barkley Prison told us. He said that your mother, Dr. Scythe, was responsible for confirming the death of the professor after his ex execution. The professor. Apparently, you always enjoyed listening to your mother's stories about her work, so... We were wondering if you might know something about what happened ten years ago. That's not all Mama did. Sorry? My Mama... ...carried out the autopsy of Clint Van Zeeks as well. What? Really? The brother of Lord Van Zeeks, the Professor Vaula! The idea of carrying out an autopsy on a member of the aristocracy was completely unthinkable back then. But the detective in charge of the investigation insisted and was miraculously authorized. That detective being instruct Inspector Gregson, of course. Quite an accomplishment for one man. That autopsy provided the vital clue needed to arrest a killer. And Mama was there for the historic event. What does all this mean? That someone is blackmailing everyone! You know, that amazing autopsy happened right here in this very room. The Professor and Clint Van Zeeks. They both spent their final moments before the burial on that dissection table there. But his lab, Mama's lab, was instrumental in some of the country's most important events. She really is proud of her mother. I wonder if you'd tell us more about exactly what happened back then, Dr. Gory. Oh, can we talk to her more now? Oh, we can! Confirmation of death. The professor's execution was Mama's first big case. She had to be in attendance at Barclay Prison's execution chamber. And signed the certificate to confirm the convict's death. Mama's the best coroner in the world, you know. I was so proud of her. But the execution didn't actually take place. No. And worse still, Mama actually helped with the jailbreak. I didn't want to know. Oh dear, you found out recently, you mean. I believed in her, in Mama, but... Now I wonder if I'm starting down the same path as her. You mean, because you omitted the time of death of this autopsy report. But that's because Lord Stonghart forbade you from including it. Just like Mama, I'm sure she was coerced by somebody too. Yes, that's my feeling as well. There's no doubt there were so powerful forces at play ten years ago. The execution couldn't have been staged without a lot of people at the prison knowing about it. Obviously, the prison governor must have been on it as well. The big man with the little handcuffs, according to what he told us. He was tricked by the chief warder. He says he knows, knew nothing about it. Of course he said that. I'd say the same thing. Just who was behind the jailbreak all those years ago? The warder, the prison governor, duh! Hello, like... Some things are so super obvious and they keep repeating it, and other things are just like... How does it all tie together in the end, though? Try it out, you might like it. I don't like that it's made with, um... Tencent? But you take the good with the bad? What does that mean? Clint's autopsy. You mentioned the autopsy of Clint Van Zeeks. As at a time when carrying out autopsies of murder victims was very unusual. It's still not a practice that's observed in our country even now. It turned out that he was the professor's final victim, and when the autopsy was performed, Mama was present, although only as a secondary assistant. The person leading the procedure was called Dr. John H. Wilson. That's right, my daddy! So, John Wilson is her dad. There was an, one other person present, the primary assistant. He was a visiting student from the Far East. Wait, a visiting student? It must have been my father, Yuji Mikotoba. So somehow, all of the visiting Japanese students were involved in this case. 
Genshin as the victim, as the killer. Um, Jigoku as trying to lessen his sentence, and Mikotoba as the autopsy. But if... I'm like, now I'm thinking, does Mikotoba know something? Was he in on this too? Oh gosh, I hope not. Tencent is a Chinese gaming company that has some shady privacy issues. Oh. Oh, thank you then. <laughs> I had no idea Professor Mikotoba had been involved in something so important. The outcome of that historic autopsy was the discovery of a vital piece of evidence that led to the capture of the professor. So that's how they came to identify Genshin Atogi as the infamous mass murderer. Do you happen to know anything about that piece of evidence? Can you tell us more? Would you like to see the records for yourself? What? Would that be alright? What's the point of keeping records if people can't look at them? They're filed under V at the back of those cupboards, with the other records from the last decade. Thank you! But why V? Oh, cause Van Zeeks. Haha, <laughs> whoops. Um, that's strange. What, Mr. Nadhodo? They aren't here. There's nothing under Van Zeeks. Strongheart took out the files. That must be. Perhaps somebody took them away? No, no one's allowed to take documents related to the professor case out of this room. But you're right, they're gone. Well, when was the last time somebody looked at them? Do you remember? It was... Oh yes, I remember now. It was two years ago. A consulting detective came one day saying he'd like to see the record. No, you don't mean... Erlach Sholmes was his name. Deep down I knew that was coming. I didn't! Do you think he stole the records? Oh no, surely not. Iris, that can't be right. Can it? Iris? I mean, I guess I could kind of see it now, like why Holmes would take it, because even when he heard the name Baskerville case, he was like, yo guys, stop investigating this case. But so, hmm. Um, Bruno. I hope you don't mind, but... What is it, Iris? I've just remembered something very important I have to do. I'm going to have to leave you now. Oh, this is very sudden, Iris. Well, we'll come with you then. Oh no, 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 there's no need. You and Luna can take your time here. Bye for now then, good luck. Ripstream? No, why? It's going okay, no. Rack. Wait a minute, little girl. Hmm? Me? I remember now. You've been here before, haven't you? Have you, Iris? Yes, two years ago, when that detective came. You were with him, weren't you? You were living specimen then, too. That's the way it usually works, yes. Was I? I really don't remember. Anyway, sorry, but a mustache. Wait, Iris! I'll brew a pot up for you. I'll brew up a pot for you when you get home. What's the matter with her? She's behaving really strangely all of a sudden. Well, in that case, we won't keep you any longer either. It's been quite a while since I've had any visitors. This was really fun. The next time you come, I'd prefer it if you're ready for dissection. Can't make any promises. Sorry. It's a bit strange that the records of Clint Van Zeek's autopsy have disappeared. But I think we've all asked we've asked all we came to ask now. Okay, so I'm gonna move. I'm gonna go show him the sweet. <laughs> nope! Where am I supposed to go now? Not here. Uh Prison? Nope! Russell Street! Oh! Whoa, there's a chest there now. 
The police are still busily investigating in here, then. But Gina is nowhere to be seen. Where is she? Yes, it has been blissfully quiet, hasn't it? Perhaps she's out investigating on her own, practicing what her boss taught her. Well, I expect she'll be back before too long. Shall we wait? Actually... There's something different about this room since the last time we were here, isn't there? We could always use the time to investigate more thoroughly. We're going to examine this chest! This little trunk wasn't here before, was it? Oh! It appears to be made of metal. It must be very heavy. I wonder to whom it belongs. There's a gash on the side. There's some initials on the outside. Look! TG. Let's ask one of the policemen if they know how it came to be here. Oi! What do you think you're doing? That's my trunk, that is! Hands off! Gina! Where were you hiding? I don't know. I leave something on the tenant for a few seconds and every Tom Dick and Aries has got its greedy eyes on it. Um, just a wild guess, Gina, but... What? Spit out, Odo. Is it fair to say that you've only owned that trunk since this morning's trial? What? What are you trying to say? Come on, this trunk goes with me everywhere. Always has. Where have you been the last year? Trying not to incur your wrath, mainly. Oh, so I can't examine the trunk anymore? It's just gone? Okay, it's just gone. Converse, your boss. You should hear him talking at the yard now. They should be ashamed of themselves. He's saying it was the boss who killed all the lodgers. Ah, uh, you mean the whole Reaper thing? Yeah. Apparently, the boss was investigating stuff that no one else at the yard knew nothing about. Not to do with all them criminals what got scot free. Yes, the ones prosecuted by Lord Van Zeeks who used bribery and corruption to evade conviction. Well then, obviously, it was that bloomin' Reaper giving the orders, weren't it? But why would people be suspecting Inspector Gregson of being involved in the killings? There was a notebook hidden in his office. Oh no, this doesn't sound good. It... It had details all about all the crimes and that have been pegged as the Reapers were. What? No. Did you see it, Gina? Did you see that notebook? They wouldn't flame and let me, because I'm just an apprentice, apparently. But it was me who found it, and it was my boss. That's right. I was pretty biffed about it, so... I sneaked a peek at what it said, anyway. Oh. That's our Gina. Secret notebook. So, you managed to see what was written in Gregson's secret notebook anyway, did you? Why, well, yeah, I see it. It's my right to read what he wrote. And what had he written, Gina? Dates, times, places, names, an old long list of them. All the tales about the bludgers supposed to have been done in by the Reaper. But there could be an explanation for that. Perhaps it was a record of the inspector's investigations into the Reaper's activities. Exactly. That's what I said. That's the first thing you'd think, right? As it happens, it was full of names I recognized anyway. Well, the Reaper's targets were almost exclusively known leaders of London's criminal underworld. Well, yeah, but there was one name right at the end that was a bit odd. At the end of the list, you mean? I'm pretty sure the date against it was October 31st. Oh, the day before the inspector was found dead. So, what was the odd name? It weren't like a name I've ever seen before. It was something like, um... Nah, it's no good. Can't remember it. Don't think it was an English name, put, put it that way. Oh dear, what a pity. That means it was a Japanese name, uh-oh. There was something else too. Didn't know if it matters, but the same name kept coming up over and over. Shin, it was. Don't suppose it mean anything, but... Did you say Shin? Eh? What? What, does it mean something? Lord Van Zeeks knew the name too. He mentioned her as well. The woman who actually did the deeds. And now we find the name of- We found out her name appeared in Gregson's secret notebook. This game is still going. I know! Ah. Uh, we haven't seen you for a while. A little while, have we, Gina? 
Well, of course not. I've been busy, ain't I? Investigating on that. The lads at the yard are trying to trace the boss's movements the day before it happens. The day before... That would be the undercover investigation into the Red-Headed League, then. Only the boss didn't go, did he? You found some cove what was pretending to be him, didn't you, Odo? Yes, it was Mr. Visual who actually went to the park on Lime Street that day, posing as Gregson. Well, anyway, you ain't the only one turning stuff up. I got my own ways of getting results. When me and my partner are here getting together, there's nothing we can't track down. Oh, little Toby! He's such a faithful friend! So, have you tracked anything down, then? What do you think, eh? Of course we have. Can't tell you, though. Police business, innit? Ugh. Anyway, the point is, if you lot ever need any help... You know who to turn to, right? Me and the L hound here. Right. Because he looks oh so hellish, honest. How much money you want, JT? I'll give you 50. For what? I mean, for life? I want 5 million. The Hellhound. Um, Gina, about your Hellhound there. Chief Inspector Toby, you mean? He's the bride of the force, he is. In Japanese, police dog means something quite different and not altogether nice to those involved in crime. But here in Britain, it's a wonderful compliment, it seems. For a canine, at least. It should be. After all, in the Great Exhibition case the other day, it was Toby here who managed to locate Drebber's workshop. Maybe it's time for another demonstration of what the Superdog can do, eh? Do we have something the Chief Inspector could catch the scent of, I wonder? <coughs> the wig? <laughs> well, Chief Inspector Toby, if you wouldn't mind having a sniff of this... He might be a little too keen, don't you think? Ah! The Chief Inspector made short work of Gina there. To play Dangan and maybe pause this game for like a few years? No, I'm so close to finishing this. I just want to like finish this and, you know, have it be added away. Woof! Ah, look what he's gone to. Oh my, that trunk clearly still has a very strong sense. Of Inspector Gregson. In other words, it must belong to him. Oh, all right. It's fair cop, I suppose. And you nearly got away with it, too. You always talk so proudly of Chief Inspector Toby's nose and what it can achieve. It did not cross your mind that he might identify something that was right next to us? Yeah, that was a bit of a bloomer, weren't it? That's enough now, then, Gina. Eh? I think it's time you told us the truth about that trunk. Metal trunk. Uh, treat this game like you treated Strikers and Hollow Knight and all the Tails games, I guess. But, Tails, I finished them. It's just I haven't started a new one. Hollow Knight? Metroidvanias aren't for me. And Strikers, I'm going back to it. I just really wanted to do um, Ace Attorney first. <laughs> It weren't like that. It, it just weren't. What are you talking about? I know what's going on through that edit of yours, but I, that ain't what happens. Alright then, what did happen? Well, like I said before, we were trying to trace the boss's movements. But let Toby here have a whiff of the boss's overcoat. And as soon as I done that, he went off like a shot. Straight to that sandwich. To a sandwich? Down to a bag of chips? Mr. Naruhodo, I believe Gina means the witness. Oh, I forgot about that sandwich. Yeah, he had it hidden between the wooden boards of his, the boss's trunk. You mean when they heard the sound like a gunshot and all piled in here? Exactly. He nabbed it from the scene. Goodness! Me and the chief inspector gave that sandwich a good grilling, and you know what it said? Oh, I tell you, if I fetch a good price, and the chip wouldn't be needed anymore. The chap wouldn't be needed anymore, so... That's all I did. Nothing more, nothing less. Would you add Adam and Eve the cheek of it, eh? Stealing dead boss's stuff to flog. So, Miss Venus wasn't the only one to meddle with the scene of the crime, then. 
I can guide you in the right direction with Hollow Knight. Also, there's multiplayer mode, so I can now help you through it. Ha 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 I still can't navigate very well, because I'm not good at platforming. How could they? So anyway, that's how it happens. And it's a pretty decent trunk, so I figured I might as well make use of it. Is there something wrong with that, eh? Well... Maybe you and Mr. Sanders should try to find the answer to that question together. I think perhaps that trunk should be turned over to the police, don't you? What are you on about? I am the police! You know, if you wouldn't mind. Will we maybe examine it? Yeah, alright then. Do what you want with it. Thank you. We shall make a detailed record of our examination of the evidence. Yay. Arr. What's the matter with Toby? Wait, before anything, examine! This gash! Have you seen this huge gash across the side of the trunk here? It's gone right through the leather and into the metal behind. Gosh, for a metal chest like this to have been so badly damaged. Whatever made the gash must have struck the side of the trunk with considerable force. I wonder how it happens. Let's have a look inside. Look, there's something inside. Ooh, let's see. It appears to be a passport, authorizing him to travel overseas. Was Inspector Gregson about to go on a trip abroad then? Perhaps the date of departure might tell us something. That was... Oh, what is it? It was for travel on 31st October, just one day before the incident. What? Really? Gregson went to France the day before his body was discovered? Or he was supposed to, at least. Is that it? BLOOD! Look at this dark stain here. Do you think... Yes, I'm afraid so. I think it's blood. Ugh, I knew you were going to say that, so that presumably means... That this was present at the scene when Inspector Gregson was killed. It's the most logical conclusion, yes. You think Gina's been carrying this around with her? If you didn't know any better, I suppose it does look like a grease stain from all the fish and chips. Can't examine anything else in there. Nothing else on the bottom and nothing on the top. Okay. Why is he acting so aggressively towards me all of a sudden? Mr. Nadahona, be careful! It must be the trunk! Whoa! Toby! Oi! What are you doing? You're gonna love this face off! Mr. Nadahodo! Mr. Nadahodo! Gina, quickly! Hail a carriage! Hey, Smooth! How you doing? Thanks for joining! Happy Tuesday! Oh, Mr. Naruhodo, are you alright? Miss Susato. Ah, oh, conscious again at last. A blessed relief, my dear fellow. After all, to drop dead after a moderate licking by a small terrier, most unseemly. What is or isn't seemly is irrelevant here, Mr. Sholmes. So glad there's no lasting damage. How are you feeling? I'm fine, thank you. Did you bring me back here? Ah, what's this on my head? A bandage? Sadly, you had no ice. So that's a compress of sugar water. Sugar water? Don't worry, Mr. Naruhodo. It's first aid treatment that my father taught me. Oh, thank you. So, let us take tea when you're feeling up to it. But of course, no sugar in the patient's cup. Ugh, the bump on my head is throbbing sweetly enough, don't worry. <laughs> Whenever you feel ready, then. Wait, that's it? No, what happened? What happened to the rest of them? Do I still have to talk to Gina? Wait, what? Gina! Gina, I'm really sorry. Why are you sorry? It's the 
enough, didn't it? If you asked me a year ago, the cops could go and hang for all I cared. But we've got our police, ain't we? To catch the bludgers. So us divers can go about our business in peace. Wait, sorry? I don't think I could have heard him properly. He said he was going to teach me everything I needed to know to be a detective. But all he got round to was showing me where the best flavored fish and chip shops are. What happens? Um, I'm investigating a lot of stuff. I don't know how this has to do with um, Van Zeke's trial, but we're everything we're finding out now is about the professor case from ten years ago. We'll see how this all ties in. Actually, that reminds me. Rexon said he was supposed to be going to Paris in the near future, didn't he? Ugh. Is something wrong? Oh, no. I'm sure I'm reading too much into things. It's just that the timing seems very coincidental. Hmm? You know, the boss was acting a bit strange recently. Like, he was always in a rush. Okay. Rush to what? Can I converse now? Nope, okay. Okay. Just more padding, so lame. Not what to do, um... Salmon... Domes. Ow! Why do they use sugar water as a compress? Because they're aliens in Men in Black. I have no idea. <laughs> um, thank you for your concern, Mr. Sholmes. My dear fellow, think nothing of it. I must say I was quite startled when I heard that you'd been attacked by a dog. For a moment, I feared that if this murderer of so many had come back from the dead. You mean the professor. Fortunately, I see your prized throat is unscathed. That stiff turned up collar of yours obviously afforded some welcome protection. Was I that close to death? All I remember is the dog licking my face over and over and over again. Well, if you wish to avoid such troubles in the future, a little mustard spread on the cheeks should do the trick. I should think that would balance the sweetness of your bandage rather splendidly. Okay. Do I talk to you now? Are you alright, Mr. Naruhuro? It's rather unusual to find ourselves here in the middle of our investigations. It's just occurred to me that I might have forgotten something when we left this morning. Please don't worry. As long as you continue to investigate thoroughly, you won't go far wrong. Oh, yes, of course. I must be. I thought you said you wanted tea. And do I have to go to Sholmes' place? Oh, okay. Den Schlund es mir verbrannt, ach Hopfen deine Wut. Her mit dem Knacker ich. Why is there a German song playing? And why is Susato's dad passed out on the couch? What on earth is going on in here? Am I having a bad dream? Ah, no, it's an old German folk song. Rather a fine rendition, I think. That's the least of my concerns. Um, Iris? Iris? What's the matter? Um, who's that sprawling, I mean, that relaxed gentleman over there? Iris? Um, is she even listening? Excuse me, sir. I do apologize for troubling you whilst you're singing so merrily, but... Would you be kind enough to explain the situation? He's not singing it. It's, a f it's the phonograph behind him. The gramophone. Well, that worked. A crooning gentleman and a mute young girl, a rather tantalizing juxtaposition. And one that appears to have incited the gods of deduction within me to find their voices too. Here's the deduction. Ah, Mr. Sholmes, do you mean? The strains of reasonings within me are playing now as a delightful duet. One melody sings of a reunion full of nostalgia. 
Whilst the other is a morose theme about the great secret you're trying to so desperately to conceal, Iris. It's turned as white as a sheet. So as usual, you've instantly seen to the very heart of the matter. And by the time my very brief my own brief performance is over, I feel sure this gentleman's song will reach its finale. So then, to music land, where all is sweetness and delicacy and harmony. Pray, do enjoy Herlock Sholm's latest logic and reasoning spectacular. Really introduction. Elementary, my dear Watson. The game is afoot. Man's identity. It's clearly Susato's dad. Firstly, we consider the gentleman's nationality. Clearly, he's a German with no grasp of the English language. As evidenced by the dramatic song he sings and his apparent inability to understand when asked to desist. So, why is the man here at all and in such apparently high spirits? The answer, of course, Iris, is clearly known to you. Indeed, we need only follow the gaze of those bright young eyes to unravel that particular part of this mystery. The reason for the man's mildly irritated warbling is revealed by the herbal tea. You obviously offered our German guest a cup of your latest herbal blend. The tea's delectable flavor has made the man's spirits soar, and resulted in this joyful ditty tumbling incessantly from his lips. I eagerly await sampling the flavor myself, that I may join the fellow in a state of elation. Mm -hmm. Now to the next question. Who exactly is this gentleman availing himself so thoroughly of the settee? As it happens a number of years ago now, a certain gentleman of German origin engaged my services in solving a particularly delicate case. He required the retrieval of letters once sent to an acquaintance that might have proved problematic. In order to conceal his noble identity, he also arrived at my office in a mask. Clearly his German. Guten Tag. Guten Abend. Ich heiße Jelly Toast. Ich... Ich bin... Ich habe... 1, 2, 3... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... 35 Jahre alt. Ich habe 35 Jahre alt. I am 35 years old. The gentleman's day was Wilhelm Gottsreich Sigismund von Ormstein. The King of Germany. If my memory serves, the mask worn by this gentleman is identical. Yes, there can be no question that mask belongs to the King of Germany. It would appear that His Majesty remembers the fine service I afforded him, and has decided to show his face again, mask and all, in order to express his gratitude. A well-mannered monarch indeed, wouldn't you agree, my dear fellow? So the identity of this masked visitor is in fact my former client, the King of Germany. Indeed, his son is currently in London as well, enjoying the wonders of the Great Exhibition. So wrong. He arrived to your office wearing a mask, that's strangely topical, and also doesn't narrow everything down. Well, the mask was already in Sholmes' office on the table. I think he's just drunk. I'm 5'7 and 28 years old. Z habe... Z habe... Haben... Hats... Habe... Hat? Wow, I don't remember the conjugation for have for you. I have acht und zweisig. Zwanzig. Acht und zwanzig Jahre alt. You have 28 years. I don't know how to do height. <laughs> so young. Yes, you are young. You're a baby. All of you are babies. Which leaves us with one remaining imponderable. Yes, you, young Iris. But your apparently inex inexplicable silence is unable to hide the truth. Yes, the reason for your muteness is concealed inside that knapsack. A five pound note, I believe. I must say, as your compatriot, I'm deeply saddened. It would appear that you have allowed yourself to be bribed into silence by His Royal Highness. Earning yourself some spending money in exchange for keeping quiet about the king's secrets. Mm. And now the final piece of the puzzle. What is the secret you strive to hide with your silence, Iris? Ah uh, yes, you need only follow that brief involuntary twitch of your eyes to find the answer. You were attempting to abscond with that coffee cup. My favorite coffee cup in, cup, in fact. 
Or should I say, the handle of my favorite coffee cup. It appears that his high-spirited highness broke it in the bits of his high jinx. Mm. Which leads us to the sad truth. My favorite co coffee cup has been broken by the king of Germany, and Iris, you tried to conceal it from me. I shall have a bill sent via governmental channels to the German royal family for its replacement. Mentally, I still feel 17, though. Still love cartoons, Pokemon, and heavy metal music. Mentally, I still feel 24. Thus concludes Herlock Sturm's great deduction of this painful puzzle. Probably because up until I was 24, I was doing so many things, like going to school, going to college, going to grad school, like, um, like entering the workforce, like things were ha changing so often back then. But like after I got settled in my job, it's been very like monotonous. And maybe that's why I feel like I haven't really like aged mentally because everything just feels so the same. There aren't any like big landmarks or hurdles that I have to pass anymore. Well, I guess I could pass if I ever get married, but ha ha ha! With your silence as well, the fellow's jovial warbling rather rings in the ears, does it not? <sighs> um, Mr. Sholmes, I must say something does rather trouble me. Pray, Mr. Sato, do tell. His Royal Highness... Doesn't appear to have moved a muscle since we arrived. Ah. And you haven't said a word either, Iris. If Mr. Sholmes has it all right, you might as well own up to it now. Your reasoning isn't entirely without substance, I must admit. And one other thing, Mr. Sholmes. Yet another grievance, Mr. Nadhodo. Surely not. Well, I actually read the story of that case recently, the one you were just describing. And according to that, at least, it wasn't the king of Germany, it was the king of Bohemia. Mm, married toast. You look 17, young toasty. If you see me in real life, you will see, like, dark circles under my eyes, all the wrinkles starting to form. I look... Uh, the, the white hairs in my bangs. Like, I look older than 17. But thank you for the compliment. Oh, sorry, I have to tie my hair. It's getting very hot. Goodness, was it? Yes, that's quite true. Master Gotts, the prince, testified to that in court. In his words, I have come to see the great exhibition all the way from my home in Bohemia. I would ask you to keep that minor error to yourselves. It could easily become quite a scandal. Oh my gosh, I'm sweating so much. My hair is like stuck to me. I believe, Mr. Naruhodo, that it's our turn now to make some corrections to a number of minor errors that may have slipped in. Yes, even Mr. Sholmes is willing to admit he might be slightly wider to mark this time. Whew. Although it's clear that Iris is definitely hiding something. We need to find out the truth behind this mysterious scene. Oh, na pizza, pizza roll mender and that na toaster oven as well. Could have been on the dinner and go. I'm sorry. Mm, I'm sorry. <laughs> but one truth is incontrovertible my favorite copy cup is no more. So, shall we embark again? On a joint presentation of Herlock Sholmes' logic and reasoning spectacular. Course correction. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. I clearly know who this is. This is a waste of time. But I love doing the deduction thing, so. Iris is clearly known to you. Part of mystery... Herbal tea! No! So what? It's some mix of herbs that gives you the urge to sing? 
Goodness, I should like to try some. And I like to hear your singing, but this man... Just how long does he intend to keep up with that tune, do you suppose? As I said, he's in stock still the entire time. And if you look closely, his lips aren't moving either. Ah, so I'm not sure what's actually responsible for the spirited singing. But I suspect the answer lies at the end of Iris' gaze. The gramophone. Yes! Duh. The reason for the man's mildly irritating warbling is revealed by the gramophone. Indeed, for no well-bred gentleman would break into an obscure folk song when making a social call. In other words, this gentleman isn't singing at all. In fact, it would appear that the fellow is unconscious. Ah, the music seems to have stopped now. I ask you, Mr. Nadahodo. Yes? Why would I have purchased a recording of that chipperish? How should I know? Well, never mind. On with the deduction. Who exactly is this gentleman availing himself so thoroughly of the settee? As it happens, a number of years ago, problematic. He is the king of Germany. Wrong. Although we've already established that it was actually the king of Bohemia, it seems that Mr. Sholmes intends to persist with his Germany theory for some reason. Come to think of it, the young prince was wearing a mask as well, wasn't he? Master Gotts, the boy whom you had in tears? Don't remind me, or anyone else. Do you suppose all members of the aristocracy of mainland Europe wear masks? I'm sure they do. Well, probably, anyway. The point is, that mask doesn't belong to any king. No, that's right, as we well know. Because we can identify the true owner of this mask. I'm 22. Ugh, so young. So many babies. Yes, there can be no question, that mask belongs to Kazuma Asugi. In other words, my memory is sublimely unreliable. <laughs> Only you could try to make that sound positive. I want to leave it on this for a second to make this my thumbnail picture. <laughs> Kazuma's mask has been languishing on this metal chest for several days. But that doesn't explain why the gentleman is wearing it now. But it is now a simple, simple matter to determine our guest's true identity. I never pressed that, what the heck? After all, the gentleman is unconscious. We need only excuse ourselves in advance, gently lift the mask, and peer beneath it. Surprise, surprise. I don't believe it. Do you really not? Ah! Oh. Father! I'm afraid, Mr. Sato, you must- No, I think not, Mr. Sholmes. And it would appear our logic and reasoning has once again revealed the truth. This mysterious visitor... ...is my unconscious father, Yujin Mikotoba. Logic and reasoning? Or just looking and saying? <laughs> I love that face! Solved. Which leaves us with one remaining imponderable. You want young Iris? Yeah, hide the truth. Uh, five pounds. Knapsack. But that's a five pound note poking out from Iris's knapsack, is it? Oh dear, I can't be sure. Most money that we encounter is in coin form. I know. I'm not even sure if we've seen any blank bank notes here in Britain at all, have we? But anyway, Father would never have paid money for Iris' silence. He certainly seems like the silent type himself, though, judging by his present state. There must be some other reason for Iris' silence, I suppose. Perhaps what Iris is trying so hard not to give away with her eyes is something entirely different. You don't say. Metal chest? This metal chest? It contains important documents, doesn't it? 
Yes, details of all cases Mr. Sholmes has worked on over the years. Written up by Iris' father, if I'm remembering correctly. Iris insists that the chest is kept locked at all times. She's never once shown me inside. Well, its contents are invaluable to her, I suppose, and entirely irreplaceable. But look at it now. Catch is unlocked for once. Ah, so it is. That's hard to ignore. Very. I've never seen that chest unlocked before in all the time we've been here, staying here at Baker Street. So I think it's this metal chest, huh? <laughs> Pet cat! Woo! Also, hi, did you get new glasses? You look pretty today. Ha ha ha. Thanks, Kirby. Also, thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. The reason for your muteness is concealed inside that metal chest. My hand is starting to hurt. Oh, my thumb hurts. An excellent observation. For upon a closer inspection, there's something different about the chest's appearance. It's kept locked at all times, yet now the catch is open. Evidently, this has something to do with your refusal to speak, Iris. This is simple of no enough matter to incite you to speak, I'm sure. I merely need to open this chest. Here we go. <laughs> Mr. Sholmes? Hurley! He's dead. <laughs> Never! Oh, Hurley, I told you not to open it. Ah, so you found your voice now, Iris. Ah! In other words, what just happened clearly reveals the truth here. Yes, the real reason for your silence until now is... This is somewhat different to the usual dance of deduction you perform with Mr. Sholmes, isn't it? Well, he's left me alone on the ballroom floor, so I'm going to have to dance this next part solo. And anyway, I need to get to the bottom of this for my own peace of mind. Now then, Iris isn't usually the silent type, so... You mean you don't actually know the answer yet? Despite that knowing point of finger before. This is Ato. Sometimes a man needs to point his finger first and think later. Oh, well, if you say so. I think we'd better examine Iris more closely and try to re rescue the situation then. The key! But you unlocked it! This deduction is going by very quickly. Oh, she has tiny animal Iris and Sholmes on her backpack. That's so cute. Where is tiny animal Susato and tiny animal Kazuma, huh? Where are they? Yes, the real reason for your silence until now is that key behind your back. Ah! When Mr. Sholmes was thrown into the air before. Just before you called out to try to stop him, you slipped something out of your mouth. That something is the key now in your hands. No doubt the key to the chest. You're so... So clever, Runo. So now it becomes clear. Thanks to Mr. Sholm's graphic demonstration, we can well imagine what happened here. What? Professor Mikotoba also opened that metal chest only to be punched into the air. And land sprawled onto the settee. So Iris ran off before in the hotel saying she had something to do. So while she was meeting with Susato's dad here and she was like, hey, hey, why don't you look inside this chest? And she knocked him out, but why? But wait, that doesn't explain all the facts. What about the stylish scarf and a cup of tea? And above all, why would he be wearing Kasuma samas mask? Well, for those curious details, I can only I can think of only one explanation. Clearly, an unbelievable miracle took place in this room. Isn't that right, Iris? Oh. <laughs> the scarf is the tablecloth. Consider how the room was arranged before this whole painful experience took place. When Professor Mikotoba opened the chest, completely unaware of what awaited him inside. The mask was flung into the air just as he was, only to land neatly on his face when it fell back down. And the teacup's journey through the air ended when it caught on the unconscious professor's finger. You mean to say that the sky stylish scarf... 
It's actually just a tablecloth. This is the great detective's office, after all. A place of miraculous deductions. Would you expect anything less? Okay, maybe this will be my thumbnail picture. But the other one was so great, too. Yes, you're right. It happened exactly as you said. Brilliant, Runo. Thus concludes Junosuke Naruhodo's great deduction of this punchy puzzle. So then, why don't I make a fresh pot of tea for us all? He's awake. An admirable performance, Mr. Naruhodo. But in the final act of the show there, you rather missed everything of importance. Mr. Sholmes? If you'll cast your mind back to my earlier deduction. Iris, clearly you're hiding a great secret. Ah, she is? From the look on her face. Mr. Sholmes must be right. Whatever that great secret is, the cat isn't out of the bag yet. So I put it to you again. You were attempting to abscond with that coffee cup. It really is a shame about Mr. Sholmes' cup. It must have been smashed when Pref ah, Professor Mikotoba opened the chest. Oh dear, so many things seem to have been broken here. But now that the deduction has taken a different direction, Iris doesn't seem to be trying to hide the broken cup anymore. In other words, her great secret is something else. Let's put our observational skills to work here one final time then. Aha! A case file! I've heard of people's clothing looking like curtains, but this is next level. A scarf being a tablecloth. Who the funk? So out of the world to think of that. You were attempting to scum that case file. Iris, as you know very well, nothing escapes the attention of a great detective. Oh no! We've- ah! Uh, sorry, I missed it! We visited Scotland Yard's autopsy laboratory earlier today, and Dr. Gory informed us that the autopsy report of Clint Van Zeeks has gone missing. Clint Van Zeeks. Hmm, yes, I do seem to recall. That some years ago, I asked to see the report in question. You were with me, weren't you, Iris? I... I... You mean, it was you, Iris? So those papers you have there are... Sorry. Why did you take the papers? Forgive me! Why did she take his autopsy report? Elementary! In truth, I would like to have thought I could have predicted the booby trap chest. But it caught me completely off guard. I was very nearly late consulting Detective Herlock Sholmes. Oh, the late Detective Herlock Sholmes. Uh, sorry, Hurley. So you mean this autopsy report really is? Yes, I took it from the lab, even though I knew it was very important. Was there something in it that troubled you, Iris? Not exactly something that troubled me. Something I'd been looking for. When I saw this report, when I saw the writing in it. I knew it was Daddy's. The writing? Your father's writing? What do you really mean? Iris? It must be something that's hard for her to talk about. Forgive me for interrupting, my dear fellows. Mr. Sholmes, what is it? I feel as though the poor unconscious gentleman on the settee has been somewhat forgotten. Ah! Father! Perhaps we should find our guest somewhere more peaceful to rest. Mr. Nadahudo, yes? Would you be so kind as to lend him your bed? We must do our very best to make him comfortable, I feel. Oh, yes, of course. I'll help you carry him up. So will I. 
No, no. I can manage alone, thank you. You have tea to enjoy. We wouldn't want Iris's brew to stew. Why not just move him to your room? Because there's no better way to make the professor comfortable than dragging him upstairs like a trunk. I wonder. Perhaps that was deliberate. Maybe Mr. Sholmes is making himself scarce to give Iris the chance to talk more freely. He must use his opportunity to talk with Iris. And find out what's going on. The autopsy report hasn't been added to my um, evidence yet. Yeah, it hasn't. Wait! But the passport has! Examine. Name Tobias Gregson, passport ACD0522. Date of departure within one week from 31st October, destination port of Dunkirk, France. Police business, permission for the applicant, and one additional person to travel. Who is the one additional person? Maybe Gina? We'll never know. Your daddy. Would you like to tell us about it, Iris? About your father? I'm sure I've told you before, didn't I? That daddy used to be Hurley's partner. Yes. And that notes about all the cases they solved together are kept inside that metal chest. That's right. Hurley told me, you see? You said that daddy's somewhere far away now, so we can't meet. That's one way of describing it. Then, when I secretly unlocked the chest and read through the papers inside, I started to build up a picture in my head of what daddy must be like. Well, that's only natural. You're just like any other girl your age. I read that daddy was a professor of medical science, so I studied and took my degree too. Well, that's only natural, I suppose. In that respect, you're not quite like any other girl of your age, though. But there was one thing I could never find out. Daddy's name. Ah. His name wasn't anywhere on any of the notes that he'd made about his work with Hurley. But then one day... That's what happened, is it? When you saw this autopsy report, you finally managed to work it out. Is that right? Yes. So it was the handwriting in the report that caught her eye. The autopsy report. When I saw the writing on that report, I could hardly believe it. I know that handwriting, I thought to myself. Because it was the same as the writing you'd seen on your father's case notes? Exactly. I was desperate to compare the two properly. I needed to see them side by side. I asked the doctor in the laboratory, but I was told I couldn't take the report away. And even worse, I was told that the first and last name we'd be allowed to even look- wait. It was the first and last time we'd been allowed even to look at it there. So you decided to steal it. When I compared the autopsy report with the case notes I had here, there was no doubt. The handwriting was exactly the same. It was Daddy's. And the signature of the coroner at the bottom of the autopsy report read Dr. John H. Wilson. But that's how I finally found out. I learned Daddy's name at last. I see. Ever since then, I've called myself Iris Wilson. And that's also when I had the brilliant idea of writing stories about all about Daddy's exciting times with Hurley. I decided then and there I'd write the adventures of Herlock Sholmes. Oh, Iris, I had no idea the stories had quite such a deep personal significance for you. I can see why the autopsy report was so important to her now. And why she was prepared to break the law to get her hands on it. Can I read it now? I must apologize, Iris. Who's talking? Oh. This is really all my fault. Hurley? I made a promise, you see, that until the time was right, I'd keep the details about your father a secret. I know. I've been very naughty. I'll take the autopsy report back to Dr. Gurry and apologize, I promise. Yes, we'll go together, I think. Then, let me look after it for you until we get there. Let's autopsy report! Let me read it! Read it, read it. Plain Fanzik's male coroner, John H. Wilson, age 33, nationality British, time of death, 31st May, between 9 p.m. and midnight. 
Observations, death from a single stab wound to the heart. Other superficial external wounds indicative of a duel. Additional notes, recent scarlet ink stains visible on the little and ring fingers of the right hand, but no document and corresponding ink was found. Autopsy findings, vital evidence recovered from the victim's stomach during autopsy. Credit to Inspector Gregson for petitioning so doggedly for autopsy procedure. No internal trauma noted anywhere in the body. John H. Wilson. So Wilson, Wilson was the coroner. Susato's dad was the first assistant. Courtney Scythe was the second assistant. Death from single stab wound to the heart. So, okay, what I said yesterday goes. Um, Genshin happened to kill Clint. Um, and people saw him do it. So they're just like, oh, you must be the professor. Because ju they just saw him kill Clint. But why would he kill Clint? Scarlet ink stains visible on little ring fingers. No document corresponding ink was found. Maybe those are the real Asuki papers, whatever he... No, but then why would Genshin have it? Because I, I really think Genshin's last will and testament is fake. But it was written in Japanese. But there were two other Japanese... Mm, no, but then that means they would have to have been in on it too. And I don't think that they'd work together with Strongheart because their friend was killed. There was something in his stomach during autopsy. No internal trauma noted anywhere in the body. But there's something that they found in the stomach. So what was the vital evidence? If it was food, it would have dissolved and that wouldn't have caused trauma. But if it was anything that was not food, wouldn't have been, wouldn't have, um, Marked up his esophagus and stuff? Maybe I'm just spouting crazy things. A duel? I didn't know Yu-Gi-Oh could be so deadly. Ha! Did you read the original manga, manga of Yu-Gi-Oh? It's really creepy. Also, the, um, the creator of Yu-Gi-Oh passed away, like, last week or something. Oh man. Death of a legend. Let's go and water my herbs, I think. See you all later. Poor Iris. She must be feeling awful. I know Mr. Sholmes is here for her, but still. Ah! What? How? What's the meaning of this, Mr. Sholmes? Mr. Sholmes? Oh dear me. So, you've noticed, I see. But that would mean... What on earth's the matter, Mrs. Sato? You've turned as white as a sheet. It's this autopsy report, Mr. Nadhoto, the one from ten years ago. The writing... Isn't Dr. Wilson's at all. Huh? What do you mean? How could you possibly know that? Because I know this writing very well. This writing is my father's. So, the doctor that was going around with Sherlock solving mysteries wasn't Wilson, it was her dad. And he wrote this autopsy report because he was the first assistant. And then Wilson just signed it. So Wilson isn't her dad. Then who is her dad? Is Mikotoba can't... Yujin Mikotoba can't be her dad. And he? Because then they'd be half-sisters. No, Sherlock. I am your father. It's not possible! <laughs> Search your feelings, you know it to be true. No! I can't read books normally, so no, I know the original, original season of the anime was way more violent, though. Oh yeah, like, um, 
One story from the original manga, uh, Yugi went up to a kid and the kid was being a jerk and he's just like, ha, let's play a game. If the lighter falls, you lose, like you die. But then, so then like they took a lighter that the kid had and they put it on his hand or something. But then Yugi's like, oh, but wait, let's pour oil all around us. So, you know, if it drops, we, there's like high stakes. And the kid's just like, what the F? Yeah, it was pretty intense. <laughs> What? Professor Mikotobas? Indeed, it's true. And now you know. My dear fellows. No, I don't know anything! What on earth does all this mean, Mr. Sholmes? Because the idea that's slowly forming in my mind. It's just too extraordinary to believe. Please, you have to explain! The autopsy report writing. So, this autopsy report was actually penned by Professor Mikotoba then. But that makes no sense. It's not possible, surely. Not possible. My dear fellow, pray, take a deep breath and think again. Wait, 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 wait. I don't know why I just clicked in my head. If the writing is the same as the one... Th that means Sholm's new... Susato's dad from year 10 years ago. So he had to have known who Susato, Susato was the whole time. And he also knew about the, the case of the, the basketballs, which is the professor case. So Sholmes knows more than he's letting on. Why don't you just tell us, man? Yes, you're right. In some ways. It actually makes a great deal of sense. It does? Ten years ago is when Father returned to Japan after his extended study and tour in Britain. And prior to his return, where was Dr. Mikotoba engaged? Ah, of course. He was an assistant to doc in Dr. Wilson's laboratory, learning about forensic science. And as an assistant, he would have aided with the dissection work, making detailed notes, which would be assembled in the full autopsy report. Once the work was complete, the head coroner would check the contents and put a signature on the documents. In other words, the only writing Dr. Wilson's of Dr. Wilson's in the report would be his signature at the end. See, but Iris got the wrong end of the stick, you mean. She saw that and assumed the whole report had been written by Dr. John H. Wilson. Which is very understandable, of course. What a complicated situation. Details of Clint's autopsy report have been updated? How have they been updated? This is just a description. Signed by Dr. John H. Wilson, who carried out the procedure, though Professor Mikotoba actually penned a report. Okay. That's all then. Your partner. Thinking about it, most of what we know about you, Mr. Sholmes, comes from the published stories of your exploits. Yes, the adventures of Herlock Sholmes written by Iris. And we really have no way of knowing what f what's fact and what's fiction. Most troubling for you, my dear fellow, I'm sure. So, what about this su supposed partner of yours? Did he really exist or not? Ah, you've come straight to the point, I see. And please come straight to the answer. I believe Iris explained it in one of her installments. There's a trusted comrade, and the only person I could truly have called a friend. And did this partner of yours truly make a record of all your cases? Are his notes really stored inside that metal chest? Absolutely, my dear madam. Absolutely. So, where's your partner now? We rarely meet. You see, he lives on the other side of the world. But if this autopsy report and the records of all your old cases were penned by the same hand, and if the autopsy report was written, though not signed, by your famous partner, there would be only one logical conclusion. Pray impress me. Your partner would have to be Yuji Mikotoba. In other words, Ms. Susato's father. Hold my word, Mr. Nadhodo. Yes? You are coming along wonderfully. You have hit upon the method at last. You finally grasp the art of deduction. You mean to say... Allow me to introduce you. To my great friend and partner, Mikotoba. And he has... He has the hat and the suit, like, 
Watson the... Oh. Professor Mikotoba. Chomes and Mikotoba. Does this mean... You're the real Dr. Wilson? No, 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 my dear. I'm still my old self. Yuji Mikotoba, your father. Oh, uh, of course. This is obviously too much for Susato-san to take in. I must say, though, that my old friend has attained worldwide celebrity as a great mystery solver is the greatest mystery of all. I still remember the first time we met. Ah, oh, pray remind me. When was it again, Mikotoba? Sixteen years ago, Sholmes. Ah, uh, yes, quite. Sixteen years ago. Elementary, my dear Watson. I just arrived from Japan with Seishiro and Genshin. I was in search of lodgings close to the hospital, some comfortable rooms at a reasonable price. But rents are devilishly high in that particular area. That's right, so I decided I needed someone to share lodgings at the expense. I was fortunate enough to be introduced to Sholmes, who found himself in a similar situation. I was a callow fellow back then, a mere shadow of the great detective you see before you now. I was working at the hospital's chemical laboratory at the time, indulging my curiosities for a little game. And the situation of our cohabitation led us to pursuing cases together, you see. Hard to believe. Oops, hard to believe it was a mere six years. We had great many adventures. But in the last year of Mikotoba's stay in Britain, that most infamous case of cases presented itself. The case with which you've become rather familiar with yourselves, the Professor Killings. After the trial, Seishiro and I were summoned back home. Hardly surprising given the circumstances. But there you have it. And as you know, all the details recorded by my trusted chronicler remain in that metal chest. This is just amazing. Professor Mikotoba really is Mr. Sholmes' famous partner. Father. Goodness, my dear. What a cutting look. As your daughter, I'm very proud to learn that you are the great detective's great partner. But nevertheless, there's another mystery I really must ask you to na explain now. And that is? You know very well what it is. The unresolved matter of Iris's father. Ah, of course, I'd almost forgotten about that one. Should have seen this coming, I suppose. Iris's father. Iris told us that all the notes about the great detective's adventures are that are in the metal chest were written by her father. Isn't that correct, Mr. Sholmes? That it is indeed what I told young Iris. But if you're Mr. Sholmes' partner, father, and you wrote all those case notes, then Iris's father must be you! Ah! Pull my word, Mr. Sato. You are coming along wonderfully as well. You too have hit upon the method at last. You finally grasped the art of deduction. <laughs> what? What you've always told me, father, is that my mother died when I was born 16 years ago. And you left me in grandmother's care whilst you embarked on your study tour in Britain. And I've always accepted that. But all this about Iris. Ooh, there it is. Susato-san's Susa ice cold stare. No, now hold on a minute. It was very complicated. I mean, it's really not what you think. And perhaps you'd like to explain exactly what it is. There it is. Now the eyes go from ice cold to red hot just before she... No, really, you've got the wrong end of the stick. Trom, say something, man. That's quite enough, my fiery fellows. Mr. Sholmes? When did he get all dressed up? Am I dressed up? <laughs> Whilst I don't like to interrupt this exciting exploration of the past, Mikotub and I have an urgent matter that requires a short excursion. But it's very late, Mr. Sholmes. Where must you go? Why, my dear madam, is that not obvious? My partner and I must pursue our natural enemies. So, get your coat, Mikotoba. The game is afoot. But Sholmes, I really must give Susato a full explanation, I think. Who is Iris's dad? Later, my dear fellow, later. A carriage awaits downstairs already. 
Haven't changed one iota, have you? I mean, really. I visited our home after ten long years. When I opened that chest in a fit of nostalgia, I quite inexplicably pass out. And as if that wasn't enough, when I eventually regain consciousness, I'm plunged straight into all this. Father, please. Go with Mr. Sholmes now. What? No, tell us who Iris' father is! I've no doubt that whatever happened, you were acting in everyone's best interests. I trust you, completely. Susato. And sending the great detective and his par great partner off on renewed adventures together. It's more than I could have hoped for in my wildest dreams. Very well then, we'll speak again later. So, I believe your own work is done for the day. I wish you the best of luck for tomorrow. Yes, Naruhodo. Good luck in battle, and in reaching a decision. I found out nothing about Van Zeke's killing Gregson. What? A decision about whether to go back to Japan, I suppose. So much happened that day that I barely knew what to do with myself. It would only be later that I come to realize. Amidst the chaos I unleashed. For all the clues I needed to finally unearth the truth? And that all the turmoil was necessary. Give me the resolve to see everything through. What? End? But wait a minute. End? Is the trial not next? Okay. Cinnamon raisin toast. Mmm, cinnamon raisin toast crunch. Wait. Okay. <sighs> okay. So I guess episode, this episode and the last one are connected? Wow. Trial part four, the old Bailey. Oh, oh gosh. Wait, but I feel, I still feel like it says I have all the evidence, but I feel like I don't. I, what is happening? Who did Gregson want to travel with, but he was killed the day before? Who killed him? Not Van Zeeks, clearly, but who else could have been moving around that killed him? What the heck? I'm so confused. What is going? <sighs> okay, well, I didn't think. Okay. Wow, trial part one. Okay, okay. Okay, well, oh my gosh. I'm just gonna have to play this again, but my voice really hurts, so I don't think I'm gonna. I don't think I'll stream a game tomorrow. If I do happen to stream tomorrow, I'll just do a chill art stream just to like clear my brain. But wow, what is... Who's Iris's dad? Who's Iris's dad? I know Strongheart is the big baddie. How... But how exactly did he blackmail everyone? Why did Genshin have to kill Clint? What was Clint writing that he had ink stains on his fingers? What was found in his stomach? Why did they kill Gregson if Gregson was so pivotal to finding, finding out that evidence in the autopsy? Who was ordering Gregson to kill all of the people that were found acquitted in barracks trials oh wait wait okay 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 
John H. Wilson was the leading coroner. Asa Shin, who was Giselle Brett, killed him. Not because it was random, but because he was the lead coroner. She's being ordered, I'm thinking by Strongheart, to kill people involved in the professor case. So it's all connecting together. So Asashin killed him and she thought she could go back to Britain. But she was dead. She was dead at the beginning of the second game. Someone else had to kill Gregson. Eh. Barricaded is definitely in on it. He's just like, oh, I don't know anything about it. No, he's definitely in on it. Who was Asogi's fake will written by? I still believe it's a fake will. Um... What, what else is there? What other evidence do we have? I feel like they could like clear out all the evidence relating to um relating to uh daily vigil. Why do we have a photograph of um the judge Judge Jigoku with Mi Susato and Susato's dad? Why was that added into evidence? The time of death of Gregson's death was added to the autopsy. Clint's autopsy was added to our, our evidence. Mm. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Kazuma, yeah, oh man. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess I'll just have to play more another time to figure all this out. But yeah, I've been streaming for three hours now. I'm exhausted. I need to get ready to sleep. I need to drink some more cold water because my throat hurts. <sighs> so yeah, uh, that's it for this stream. So thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night. Maybe see you tomorrow. If not, maybe see you Thursday. I'll try to get back into streaming more so I could catch up on all the games I've put on hold just to play this. I, I will finish all games. I'm gonna do it. Anyways, um, yeah. Have a good night, everybody. Bye! Where's my mouse? Where's my mouse? I can't click on stream because I can't find my mouse. Okay, bye for reals.